If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome you, you know, uh, uh, welcome all of you for this um, EWM uh, training session. I think we are going to talk about the uh, EWM extended virus management uh, capabilities, the features, the functionalities, and um, uh, basically, you know, uh, the process mapping as well. And of course, the core configuration. We're not going to talk about the entire configuration, at least the critical configuration aspects in these um, 40 or 45 hours or 50 hours, roughly 50 hours. Uh, you can call me uh, Rajan. And uh, let me just introduce myself. Um, I have 22 years of SAP experience, uh, 22, 22 years of SAP experience, and um, uh, out of which 12 years in uh, EWM. I've done like uh, six to seven implementations in uh, extended virus management for iTech, uh, life science, and uh, you know the wholesale retail, of course, and also for the um, IS oil, the downstream petrochemical uh, industries. You know that's where my expertise is: uh, bulk storage, material handling, and uh, storage and issue and picking or whatever. Yeah, uh, pretty much worked in all areas of uh, EWM, inbound, outbound. Uh, the so-called ground control, which is storage and operations, and also uh, integration uh, experience with production and QM especially. Uh, of course, with the LE TRA, but not uh, a TM integration, transportation management integration, I don't have implementation experience, uh, only theoretical knowledge. And um, that's about me. And uh, I've done uh, like around uh, 60 uh, trainings, you know, virtual trainings and uh, Prior to the COVID, we used to do the face-to-face, -face, the classroom sessions. Uh, so since COVID, yeah, we were doing all the virtual trainings and uh, around 60 trainings I have conducted for all, you know, um, the consultants and uh, the business process owners, uh, SMEs and so on and so forth. Um, that, that's an intro about me. Let's get started. Um, okay, so I'm going to run my uh, own PPT slides. Uh, you know, you will not be uh, having access to the slides, but uh, the recording anyway will be there for you. So if at all you want to, you know, um, review it, uh, only way is the recording. And of course the slides um, uh, at Zarentech also, you know, pretty much are aligned, but yeah, there could be some uh, deviation. So I'm sharing the screen. So let me know if, uh, you know, I'm getting, uh, the refresh rate is not good or if I am dropping, you know, uh, not consistent. These are the materials, you know, loaded in the Zarentech site. Yeah. Um, these are, I think I have done some uh, corrections to it. Uh, so let's see, I'll, I'll just go through them. Uh, uh, no, not this one, so maybe we'll take the another folder, right? Where is the... The two folders. Hmm. Uh, where we can see the course curriculum materials, right? Okay. Session PPT, yeah. the general disclaimer and uh, so we'll start with the basics you know just for the people who are beginners you know to wm or ewm we'll just talk a little bit on the you know the what why and um, the, the the evolution of ewm and so on and so forth um so everyone knows like warehouse right we are storing the goods there's a inherent need to store the goods um and then deliver to the customer, mostly customer or to the uh, different plant or the hub warehouses or the regional warehouses, or it could be for the production consumption need, you know, the center uh, raw material or the components. So broadly speaking, the demand can originate from a customer or it could be um, a STO moving from one plant to another plant or production needs. But these are the main customers from the warehouse point of view. We need to fulfill their uh, request and also there is a need to store the goods in a good condition. And maybe we will be doing some little bit of value added services, you know, like um, to increase the longevity of the product. 
or customer specific uh, packing or labeling needs. Um, so at the end of the day, this is warehouse management. You know, we store the goods for whatever reasons, whether it's a make to stock or a make to order, or you know, whatever the supply chain uncertainties, the decoupling or um, French shoring, near shoring, blah blah blah. Whatever may be the reason, we got to store the goods. And there is no escaping. And when we are storing the goods, uh, uh, we have to, you know, ensure that uh, they are not spoiled, and you know, we don't uh, send the old shelf life material and uh, uh, keeping the, uh, you know, the new one. Uh, sorry, uh, keeping the new one and then disposing the old one is the ideal one. But if you are doing the other way around, then uh, eventually, you know, you need to scrap the materials. So we have to deliver the right goods to the right customer at the right time in an efficient way. You know, the efficiency is a uh, efficient way is an all encompassing term. That means uh, you have to run the warehouse uh, efficiently, meaning the resources should be, uh, uh, you know, productively used and um, the space has to be optimally utilized. You know, we don't want to consume a huge space, especially when you're running the warehouse in the, uh, uh, you know, the city or in the, just in the outskirts as well, not in the remote village. Yeah. Um, so these are very generic slides why a WM system is required for the said activities to fulfill the customer and uh, then comes the service level and so on and so forth. But what are the activities typically we do in Averos? Um, uh, put away, pick in, unloading, loading, pack in. These are the activities we do. The key objectives of uh, WMS, right? Warehouse management system. It need not be SAP uh, EWM, any WMS for that matter. Uh, customer service. First is the on-time, consistent on-time delivery. And then um, increased efficiency and productivity. The resources should be effectively utilized and um, we have to stay competitively. You know, when you're running the warehouse, it has to be like, uh, I'm not sure about the Mahindra logistics or the the, the prayer, you know, the big buzzer, uh, it's gone anyway. So those logistics are still, you know, coming up. Let me just run my slide. Um, just, just a moment, I'll, I'll unshare. Since you guys have uh, that much experience, I don't want to start from the very basics. We can always switch back, not a problem. But now let me share again. Um, so, okay, this is what we're going to discuss. Um, fundamentals of WM and WMS. WMS is a warehouse management uh, system or the application, right? It, it could be a, uh, hello, am I audible? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is uh, you know need not be a SAP. It could be Blue Yonder or you know whatever Red Ferry, the Manhattan. I think all merged. I'm not uh, you know keeping a tab on those things. Uh, IM features. You know we are not comparing inventory management with WM. But what are the great features of IM which can which can be leveraged, and um, and WM comparison with the EWM. Since you guys have WM experience, you know let's see uh, what's so great about EWM and a need for EWM and uh, evolution of EWM. We are not going all the way back to 2006, but at least the last four or five years were amazing years. A lot of features and functionalities were released, uh, you know, as part of the S4 and a wave. Uh, every year, uh, one or two feature packs are being released, you know, so now uh, the last four years um, equivalent to the, you know, the previous 14 years, I would say. Functional areas of EWM and which industries are best fit for EWM. A high level process flow and a basic demo. We'll see if we can do it today. Uh, otherwise, we'll do it tomorrow. Deployment options. We'll talk about the dif different deployment options. And then we will jump into the integration setup. You know, when I say integration, it could be uh, there are two things one is a document integration and controls, and the other one is a system integration. You know, one is a system integration, the other one is a document integration. When I say system integration, the QRFC, the IDOCs, or the you know, web services, whatever the DRF. Um, those things are part of the system integration, uh, the special RFCs and uh, other things. Document integration, you know, right? Understanding the document um, uh, nitty gritties and you know, the need for the document specific, the purpose for the document. Now, understanding of IM, right? Why to store goods in the first place? Uh, what are the typical activities carried out in the warehouse? Which industries are best fit? Yeah? IM features and capabilities. Um, so we know inventory management, uh, IM, inventory management. Uh, we can handle uh, stocks at the aggregated level, at the storied location level. Aggregated or accumulated level, we can you know, see the stocks um, in MMB, uh, the transaction code. And also it can handle different stock types like uh, F, B, or Q. F is unrestricted and B is block stock. 
or is customer return and Q is quality stock. These are the four global stock types or non-location dependent stock type or whatever. So these are the four global stock types. You know, let's use a term just to be in a common uh, for everyone. Uh, global stock types, you know, F, B, or Q, unrestricted, uh, blocked, customer return and quality. Special stocks also it can handle, right? For example, the customer consignment, the vendor consignment, or the returnable transport packaging, uh, the WBS uh, sales order stocks. Um, nowadays, you know, we can have the customer stock as well uh, for the uh, air, airlines industry as well, you know. So the I, IM can handle a lot of special stocks, you know. Um, uh, there are a lot of scenarios covered, like uh, individual PO, subcon, consignment, um, you know, uh, uh, third party or drop shipments. So it's all supported by the inventory management with the uh, different stock types. And um, also IM can handle the product complexity to a certain extent, right? All the serial number management, batch management, uh, split valuation, you know, uh, yeah. So the real time updates happen, the material movements, uh, you know, when you post a document, uh, you can see them, uh, it gets posted real time. And there are some special reports uh, where you can see the uh, opening and closing balance. And what are the movements happened within the time horizon, you know, selected time horizon. So there are these reports. And you can also update the FA document and the cost accounting. Physical inventory also we can do. And um, it has a very good integration with, you know, uh, purchasing SD module, the MRP, uh, PP production module, the process industry and the uh, regular production order scenarios and, uh, you know, main integration with the LE, logistics execution. Logistics execution is nothing but uh, IM taken from MM and uh, uh, you know the delivery taken from the SD and bit of transportation is uh, called the LE logistics execution and the earlier WM was part of the LE only you know, I forgot to tell you the WM is part of the LE and uh, it has a very good integration with the LE and of course QM. Any questions um, on this? So we have the stock overview, MMB, and then the MB51, the material document list. And also there's a special report, I think it's the MB5B or something. So where in a given um, closing date and the opening date, right? We can see the movements of green color is the positive goods receipt movements or the red ones are the goods issue or the you know, transfers out them. So what are the limitations, you know, or uh, where exactly I am, uh, needs to hand over the control to WM or where there is a need for WM, you know, or EWM. Uh, there's a lack of visibility to the material or product flow. We don't know. At the end of the day, we print a material document, but uh, we don't know whether it is picked or packed or at the staging area or at the vast work center. We don't know if it's a complex warehouse so, or, or multiple step in the operations. Um, so we don't know what's happening, you know. All that we are doing is printing a material document, so-called pick list or um, uh, and then uh, we don't know which stage of the dispatch process are we in. Uh, as I said, uh, the physical steps and system steps are not aligned. We are eating the accounts uh, before and, and when they go to the actual location for picking, there could be surprises, you know, for example, if they have to pick 10 quantity and they only spotted eight, you know, so they have to come and reverse the transaction and, uh, you know, they, they can't do on the fly like we do in EWM uh, using an exception code, you know. So when they go to a bin, there could be surprises, or there could be you know mismatches or whatever. So uh, it 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 warrants a post facto correction. Uh, the because we we uh, hit the books before random. Limited visibility of uh, materials, right? So since we, there is no bin management in IM, uh, at the max we can uh, have a text only field. So we have uh, everything is on the people's head, or uh, you know they have to maintain a register. Uh, so it's very cumbersome, you know, beyond a point, there is no point actually, you know, for example, there are like more than thousand um, uh, pin locations are there. It can't be managed, you know, humanly, it's uh, very difficult. Uh, there would be more time wasted in uh, locating the material for put away. And most importantly, the picking time is critical, you know, for the operations. Uh, so it's going to be compromised. Um, cross docking. Yeah, if you're not dealing with the delivery documents, especially on the inbound side, normally if there is no inbound delivery or ASN, then uh, if you post the material document directly, then uh, cross docking is sort of ruled out. Cross docking, either a planned cross docking or you know opportunistic cross docking, you need the delivery documents. Anyway, we have the delivery for the outbound, but for the inbound, we don't have the deliveries. You know, so if you are not dealing with the deliveries, 
just in case, you know. So cross docking is ruled out. So the key takeaway from this slide is uh, uh, if there are more materials, more SKUs, and more number of locations, then let's just put a threshold, maybe you know, 300 or 500 in number, just for the namesake. Uh, beyond that, it's it's we need a WM solution, you know. And as I said, the physical steps and system steps are not aligned because you post the document uh, beforehand and uh, there would be lots of corrections, post-factor corrections would be there. So these are the things. And absolutely, we don't have the visibility. Uh, so now, any, any questions on this? I'll just pause here for a moment. Just feel free to you know, uh, interact and uh, stop me if I'm um, you know, quite fast. I, I can just shift the gears, not a problem. Gagan, Bipin, Rashi, all good? Uh, no, from my yeah, point. Yeah, no questions. Okay, all MMB. Yeah. Why to store goods in the first place, right? As I said, there are broadly speaking three areas customer, production staging needs, and stock transfers. You know, uh, these are the main three areas we have to fulfill. You know, ours is a fulfillment center. So we are uh, execution uh, uh, oriented guys. So we have to execute and fulfill the order and, you know, ensure that um, the core thing, uh, we promised the time, we requested delivery date. We have to honor the commitment. That is our first thing. Then comes the service level, you know, all the loyalty, satisfaction, blah, blah, blah. Sheer volume and diversity of products, right? Uh, variety of products. There should be a strategy to store them properly so that they don't uh, get damaged or, you know, uh, the searching is not... Uh, uh, you know that 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 uh, complex. You know we have to simplify the searching things uh, by keeping necessary pick face locations. The operator should be able to pick immediately. You know because picking uh, it's all uh, lead time only. The throughput only matters. You know for the outbound. So either it could be a random storage or a segregated storage or a mixed storage. You know depending on the strategy, and also the product uh, size, shape, and uh, volume or whatever. You know the 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 fragile nature and. Uh, things demand versus supply you know it could be uh, seasonal or constant demand or fluctuating demand uh, you know empty as the mto make to stock make to order uh, all this will play a role in how much quantity to be stored the recommended storage quantity or sq service levels and customer satisfaction and loyalty these things are okay um, we know the supply chain you know the uh, issue the pana the swiss canal incident and then the disruptions you know uh, now the decoupling, the China and the, the you know things going on, the, the Ukraine and Russia war, so all that are you know uh, giving more emphasis on the supply chain um, resilience, you know resilience and uh, the near shoring, the French shoring and other things are uh, giving more importance to the you know the WM and the TM, especially the logistics, not only the intra logistics but also the the entire logistics supply chain. What do we manage in the warehouse? What exactly the supervisor is managing? Of course, the stock and bins, you know, he has to ensure that the stocks are, uh, the, the SKUs are kept in the right bin and it's not uh, elder skelter, not kept, uh, uh, you know, in the entire warehouse. Uh, uh, for example, single SKU uh, occupying three or four bins, you know, and then the picking happening randomly and uh, frequent consolidation is uh, envisaged. That is not expected, you know. And then the demand fulfillment and prioritization, and I say demand, it is uh, purely the uh, the sales order, the deliveries only, you know. So the demand could be very dynamic nowadays, especially the e-commerce customer are very, very fuzzy. They, they just keep uh, changing the orders or canceling the orders. And, you know, anytime, anytime, anything can happen. The cancellation can happen at, even after the things are loaded also. So the demand fulfillment and, you know, some rush orders may drop in and we need to prioritize them. And um, we need to uh, reschedule them, you know, on a... Uh, that's that's an important job of the supervisor. Uh, then the warehouse workload. You know, the, when they say the warehouse workload, uh, it is the WO, the warehouse order. The warehouse order is nothing but a group of tasks. Uh, I would say it's an um, uh, executable optimum work package, EOWP. Executable optimum work package is like a KFC combo. You know, based on the appetite of the person, you can give him a nice combo. You know, if he's not having that um, angry. Maybe you can just give him a burger. Otherwise, you know, you can just give him a complete a package or a combo or you know a meal. That is a warehouse order, so that in a given trip, uh, he can bring the load uh, maximum load. You know, at the same time, not going back and forth uh, like a, like a headless chicken. Yeah? So that is warehouse order. 
resources, right? Uh, it could be human resource or uh, the MHE. What is MHE? Material handling equipment. Uh? So we have to utilize them effectively and uh, their health, safety and well-being are you know, paramount. And um, we don't want some people dodging and you know others are struggling and uh, it's like a government organization. 5% of the people working and the remaining 95% uh, are enjoying. So these kind of things we don't want and uh, you know everyone has to have their uh, fair share of allocation and um, you know based on their expertise levels and the equipment what they're uh, operating so based on that you know you should be able to uh, allocate um, and then uh, on a need basis you have to do the splitting and merging of the wos you as a supervisor you know so you as a supervisor uh, you are managing these things only you know for that only you are paid so you're not doing the heavy lifting or picking packing or driving the forklift so you are managing the bins so that the bins are uh, effectively utilized, the space is effectively utilized. Demand, you are dancing to the tunes of the demand, meaning you are uh, sensing and responding or you are, you know, whatever you are uh, just re responding to the uh, demand situations, dynamic situations proactively. And the workload, Varro's workload, you are doing the uh, merging, splitting and, you know, prioritizing them by dragging in a special queue and uh, you know increasing the priority number by one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. So these are the things you are doing uh, so that you don't miss the, uh, you know, the dispatch. And the resources, you know, as I said, uh, everyone should be effectively utilized, uh, just not the human being, but also the equipment utilization. Any questions? Um? Hmm? See, uh... Rajan, I have a couple of things. Uh, mm -hmm. When you talked about the IM, uh, you can also touch base if you have prior experience in the S4 that how the S4 IM versus ECC IM uh, different. If there is a difference, if you feel so, that was one thing. Mm -hmm. And Who's second, it? yeah, let's just repeat. Pepin, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, uh, okay, we yet to talk about uh, EWM part. Uh, so. But in your prior experience, have you seen the combinations of uh, the ERPs, ECC, yeah, ECC or the prior versions, but the customer has gone for the EWM? Yeah, we will discuss all of them, you know. Okay. Uh, the coming slides uh, will provide the necessary platform for us to discuss more. Mm -hmm. yeah, on mm -hmm. that. Sure. sure. Yeah, I am, uh, I have to do something because, you know, I am is also evolving, but not at the, uh, you know, it's just doing at the glacier phase only. So we will look. Uh, Cover that, you know, uh, maybe uh, I'll just reserve some time uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of the session. So, what are the typical activities? Any other thing, Bipin? Uh, the, the deployment and the ECC and, uh, you know, the combinations uh, we'll talk about when we discuss the deployment. Huh? Okay. What are the typical activities scattered in the warehouse? Uh, receiving. I, I just put it in, a, uh, you know, for the sake of better term, I put everything in the receiving or you can call it as an inbound loop, you know, the inbound uh, process. Basically, we do unload, we do deco, deconsolidation, uh, value added services, VAS, quality inspection, and put away. You know, these are the things. If you want to keep the put away separately, it's okay. You know, you can call it uh, receiving and put away, or you can um, call it the inbound, you know. So I just put receiving, everything as receiving, including the put away. So if you want to keep the put away separately, it's okay. Shipping. Shipping is simple word. At the end of the day, we have only PPSL, the acronym PIC, Pack, Stage, Load. PPSL. There could be some VAS activities. Uh, it could be customer specific packing or relabeling or you know applying the logo or uh, yeah branding. So those are the VAS activities. So any questions on the deco and VAS? Anyone um, wants some explanation or uh, any volunteer if you want to talk about deco and VAS? What do you know about deco and VAS? Rashi, uh, who are the WM, EWM experts? Huh? Charud. Yeah. What is deco? Uh, we don't use in our project deco or was, but what I understand right. deco is basically. Sorry for the background noise. Uh, just one. Then the flight going. Okay, so deco is basically where we uh, segregate the products. Uh, uh, if we have a, you know, a different products in one bag and we are segregating and then passing it to the different storage types that we can call as deco or was is like any labeling activities any uh, repacking activities those are the value added services um that we can consider as was hmm. excellent uh, that's a good thing you said 
deco is basically uh, right you are segregating or sorting them you know before carrying them on a trolley or a, in a cart so we do the uh, preparation steps that is deconsolidation or if you receive a mixed hu mixed handling unit then you want to separate them before doing the put away that is deco you know deconsolidation um, it could be for n number of reasons for example the inspection lot you want to separate them or if any cross docking requirement is there for partial quantities uh, you know it's all coming under the deconsolidation umbrella similarly vas is one more umbrella umbrella term uh, where you do lot of value added activities either to increase the longevity of the product the shelf life of the products or it could be customer specific packing needs you know for which you might charge the customer also for the additional activities you perform you know the effort and the, there's a, a labor and effort involved right? the cost is involved so you might charge the customer as well uh, if you are using the uh, sap uh, billing uh, billing component of uh, ewm okay that's good uh, that's good okay so ship in uh, am i still sharing the screen yeah it's all good pick pack stage load Uh, with or without vas uh, the good news is there is no deco in the outbound it is not uh, you know making any sense in the outbound and there is no qm support you know qm even though it's supported with the inspection lot type whatever 10 11 12 12 but still but still it is not uh, supported in ewm integrated scenario so the qm outbound is not supported qm inbound is okay and gr and gi goods receipt and goods issue are just a triggers happening from ewm but the actual postings uh, you know happens in ecc the core ERP, ECC, or the S4 core, one and the same, you know. Just in case, if I am uh, using the words um, uh, loosely, like you know, then you can just uh, imagine. If I say ECC, it's all same thing only. I'm talking about. It could be ERP, ECC, or S4 core. So the GR and GA are the system triggers happening from the EWM instance, and uh, actual postings happens in the ECC or the ERP or the core, and uh, you know there is the equivalent material document called warehouse material document in EWM. Um, so these are the typical activities carried out in the warehouses uh, you are doing the receiving uh, and uh, shipping yeah all loading and load these are the things we going to talk about the coming days the coming weeks so what is a wms this sap is a yarn the software that streamlines every part of the management warehouse management from receiving uh, to picking packing shipping inventory tracking and all the steps in between the intra logistics A WMS helps companies increase operational efficiency and reduce waste and cost, while improving the labor management and customer relationship. You know, uh, it has a very good integration with TM transportation management, and of course, it has to be uh, mobile, right? We have to use the uh, Zebra devices or the um, Honeywell devices and scan the barcode. As of now, we are scanning the barcode, uh, but but you know, future we are talking about all the um, RTLs and you know the robot uh, AMRs. and whatever you know the augmented reality the iot's blah 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 the drones <laughs> so what are the different types of warehouse management systems are there there are three types of system one is a cloud based system and a public or private cloud and then uh, uh i don't know what they're trying to say standalone cloud and integrated standalone nowadays we know right it's all uh, cloud license being sold by sap you know as part of the sap rise the on premise uh, licenses i don't think you know they are being um, uh, sold by sap it's all uh, uh, cloud based ones and either we can go for a multi tenant or uh, you know if you are taking the single tenant you have both the options you know the embedded option and the decentralized option which they call uh, in stack and uh, extra stack or something yeah so understanding of wms right uh, the core function is to track the amount of material track every bin the dolls of material keep a record you know all the movements sap is very good in keeping the record right uh, the purchase order uh, the sales order delivery document similarly in ewm we have the task of different categories you know like uh, goods received goods issue put away picking uh, internal replenishment so we are uh, having n number of variety of tasks to keep a track and you know keeping the control of the movements Uh, and real time you know it is all aligned with the real time movements so that's the beauty of uh, you know having the task uh, as a control record um and the expectation from a wms any wms uh, it is a software basically that should help control and manage the day to day work uh, it should be like a horse you know they should ride the horse and uh, it should be able to 
ensure that the goods are delivered at, you know, at the right time, expected time. It can be a standalone application or it could be part of an ERP system, the embedded and decentralized approach they're talking about. Then the most important thing is uh, it has to guide the inventory receiving and put away. The put away, the bin location is important. You know, uh, Once uh, the bin is uh, correctly identified for a particular product, based on the velocity or based on the you know product nature the size and shape and uh, the the proximity things then picking is not a rocket science picking is simple at the end of the day it's a fifo or lifo or you know a quantity optimized picking only at home also or in the your day-to-day -day, uh, you know thing you might have noticed right so if you keep the uh, uh, the purse on the rear pocket and maybe the mobile on the left pocket and maybe handkerchief on the right pocket, then your hand will automatically go, you know, you know where to pick what, right? So you'll not be having any confusion at all. Similarly, when you do the put away properly and picking is not a problem at all. So that's why, you know, we say put away is very strategic in nature and picking is more of, you know, operational in nature. In sense, the sense like we have to uh, focus on the wave management, the throughput and, you know, the uh, workload management. So that is the headache in the uh, outbound, whereas the inbound is more of strategic in nature. You know, we have to have the proper um, put away strategy, the put away rules uh, to find the best location, uh, uh, either using the slotting or without slotting. So the WMS should also advise on inventory replenishment, uh, uh, when to replenish the fast mover and how much to replenish, uh, whether it's an order based replenishment or a min max based replenishment. Uh, we don't want the picker to come with the excuses. Hey, I have gone to the bin and you know the stock is not there. The replenishment fellow is sleeping and you know he's just uh, having coffee. We don't want that kind of uh, explanation or you know uh, from the from the picking operator. So especially when it's a fast moving item, we have to get the stock really you know uh, fast enough uh, to the shipping docks. So. And as I said, you know the WMS the general expectation is to have a mobile device. Uh, radio frequency or a uh, solution so that it uh, uh, whether you use the ITS mobile or the you know the android phones uh, using the apis or you know your front end whatever front end you want to uh, but at the end of the day you have to uh, talk seamlessly using a mobile device and it has to connect real time with a meaningful uh, dialogue you know the dialogue should be meaningful uh, uh, meaning intuitively and Connecting to a specialized external system, you know, if you are talking to an automated system like ASRS system, automated storage and retrieval system, uh, it could be a crane system or a conveyor system or, or a, you know, AGVs or robots. Uh, you should be having a, a interface which can talk and you know exchange the data. Either it could be a EWM being a master system or it could be a slave system. Either way, it, there should be some exchange happening. At the end of the day, the document should be posted appropriately and the necessary subsequent communication has to happen. Um, any any points or any, anything you want to add or uh, feel free, you guys. Uh, you want more interaction, you Rajin, want, you know. Can, yeah. uh, can you elaborate a little bit uh, about uh, types of warehouse? Uh, like uh, on the uh, prior mm -hmm. slide, that cloud-based and something. Uh, types of warehouse. Something. Types of warehouse, these are the types of warehouse, you know. As far as we know, Forget about the SAP thing. SAP thing is like, you know, as I said, the SAP RISE is uh, the new concept, meaning all licenses are sold uh, uh, as a cloud license only. You have to buy the, you know, and pay a monthly subscription to SAP. I'm not sure, you know, because you guys are on the field. I'm nowadays more of uh, training only and less of implementations now. Uh, so you have to see, right? I mean, uh, if you are paying the SAP monthly subscription, who is going to implement, especially when there is any, uh, you know, custom, uh, uh, developments. If there is a simple body, then I think uh, that's a different story. Uh, but but in the cloud, uh, there are only two options actually. Uh, forget about the multi-tenant. You know, multi-tenant one is for the uh, simple clients or the basic uh, clients uh, who are uh, just going with the subscription and they, they don't have any say. Meaning, they buy the standard uh, package and it's zipped out and then um, it's all there. You know, basic thing is there for them. Whatever the uh, RD is equivalent. Um, things are there but if you're talking about the uh, single tenant then it could be the embedded option and decentral option equal and they call it uh, in stack and um, extra stack you know so the extra stack is having some advantage i will we will compare them you know what is the embedded and decentral difference you know in the coming slides um, is it clear did i answer your question 
Ja, dazu. Yeah. So now these are the types of viruses, uh, protection viruses, the distribution center uh, viruses, which is very uh, uh, rigorous viruses or you know high intensity viruses, where uh, we are looking at a lot of uh, automation, the wave management, uh, you know, slotting to find the best locations, a uh, replenishment uh, to to fill the big face locations, service parts viruses, assortment of products, you know, variety of product, heterogeneous uh, product range, uh, high volatility, you know, product obsolescence. Uh, demand fluctuations and uh, uh, you know kitting activities uh, vas activities cross stock or transit viruses uh, these two are different cross stock is like a platform viruses where uh, you receive the goods and uh, you know most likely you dispatch it in the same day or the next day like a railway platform you know you don't stay there you just board the train and you know uh, get it off the platform so likewise you know the cross stock viruses is a platform viruses you receive the stuff and immediately you uh, move it to different customer locations because it's very Uh, better to serve from the cross stock viruses, the main viruses being in the outskirts. Uh, the transit viruses is a different thing, you know. It is used for e-commerce industry, where uh, the last mile delivery happened from the transit viruses. And production viruses are real, relatively simple viruses, you know, like uh, raw material handling, uh, the components supply to production supply area. But nowadays these are also getting complicated because SAP has put in a lot of investment in the. in the production uh, integration scenarios like uh, kanban just in time just in sequence uh, you know um so it's so a lot of effort uh, uh, investment happened uh, in the last 4 5 years or 3 4 years uh, in the production integration areas you know uh, it's no more a simple one earlier it used to be just a simple staging and you know raw material issuing to production and um, yeah uh, it's all complex viruses only distribution center viruses service parts viruses uh, here different Uh, complexities are required like you know uh, uh freight handling the gts uh, you know um you you have, have experience on the e-commerce uh, scenarios as well um let's just continue so these are okay right i mean uh, that's a general expectation for any any wms and then we talk about the nutshell objective right uh deliver the right goods to the right customer at the right time in an efficient way the right goods means a uh, uh, customer asking for a country of origin you know india or germany uh, they want a shelf life more than um, 300 days so in that case you have to deliver the right goods uh, you know as uh, based on the selection criteria to the right customer we don't want any mis shipments or wrong shipments going to the Uh, you know different ship to parties at the right time in an efficient way the promised uh, requested delivery date uh, efficient way we talked about right we have to run the warehouses you know competitively meaning we have to uh, utilize the space the assets and the productivity and you know all that are important uh, nowadays uh key kpis you know these are not the complete list just an indicative one maximize the service level so every time on time delivery the time and consistency are critical delivery accuracy is important right shelf life and customer specific requirements high throughput what is throughput anyone it's the number of delivery lines shipped in a specific time window right you can see imagine like in the martha ali signal right from morning 8 to uh, 10 10:30 or 10 o'clock what are the peak hour how many cars are passed pass cross that signal you know that is throughput so if your martali signal is properly planned and other things there could be huge number of cars passing through that uh, peak time that is a throughput you know in the warehouses uh, typically you run a wave management and within that um, uh, two to three hours window how many delivery lines are dispatched that is throughput so it has to be a uh, high throughput warehouses uh, for uh, for for wholesale and retail especially and also for the fmcg e-commerce minimize the inventory cost uh, efficient space capacity utilization less a truck turner on time the truck has to you know be called on the uh, a fair basis like you know whichever truck reported morning that has to be called uh, so we low, we pay less demerages and uh, other waiting charges and the warehouse has to be managed by exceptions right we have to track the exceptions also so that you know the exceptions will provide a, a proper clue so that we can plug the whole you know where exactly the loopholes are there for example the picking operator uh, entering lot of exceptions that means something is fishy you know the inbound operator there is a loophole 
and he was utilizing the loophole and uh, doing an incorrect placement. Um, so that's why you know the exceptions are uh, uh, reporting is important. Um, so how the KPIs are met? Uh, as I said, uh, the inbound and outbound uh, it's having a ripple effect or a domino effect. So the inbound um, and outbound it has to have a resonance. You know, there should be nice orchestration. Uh, if you place the bin stocks in the right bin, then the outbound will be uh, you know happy or uh, they will take the material effi efficiently uh, fast, quite, quite fastly. So wave management is important. Uh, the wave management will help you for this high, high throughput to achieve this throughput so that uh, you can track the progress and uh, you know in a group I know who is performing well or you know who is not performing well. Uh, in a group, uh, if it's individual, it's very difficult for me. But if I put them in a group, then I know I can track. It's easy. It can be compared to the, you know, the ocean or the sea wave. You know, the wave is bringing the water to the beach. Similarly, the wave, EWM wave is bringing the goods to the, to the shipping dock or the shipping area, uh, the GA dock, which issue dock. That's the purpose of wave management. Wave means a progression, you know, something is moving ahead, actually. That is wave, yeah. Uh, WOC here, where also the creation rules. That's helping us to come with the nice KFC combos. Uh, resource management will help you to uh, manage the resources effectively, efficiently, and also, you know, on a fair share basis. Um, comprehensive and continuous physical inventory. A lot of procedures are there, you know, to ensure that the book inventory and uh, the physical inventory are in sync. Uh, because, you know, if there is a mismatch, uh, then people will uh, lose the trust in the system. They will, uh, you know, keep uh, uh, putting exception codes or doing the overrides. And eventually, you know, you need to scrap the implementation and do a fresh implementation, or it could be data, you know, corrupted data. So if there is a, uh, if the system is uh, not to be believed, then people will lose the trust in the system and they will do on their own whims and fancies. Um, so that's important, you know, uh, forget about the legal and the regulatory requirements, but uh, the most important thing is the trust in the system, you know, uh, whatever the system says, uh, uh, it should be, matching to the real thing, you know, minimal exceptions. Um, and we have a lot of uh, tools at our disposal, the warehouse monitor, the cockpit, uh, the analytics and insights, you know, for us to uh, uh, keep a track on the uh, ongoing, you know, operational events. Um, wide array of exception handling. There are some close to 30, 35 exception codes are there. Uh, forget about the uh, MFS exceptions, but, uh, yeah, general exception, exceptions like, you know, changing a bin or changing a bin or uh, a batch change or HU change, all that can be done on the fly. The operator need not come to the supervisor and, you know, every time there is a uh, exchange going on and, you know, travel happening. So it's not required. We believe in uh, uh, people empowerment and uh, so they can do things legitimately if they're genuine and, uh, you know, you can always track them and then question them and then... Uh, and as I said, you can plug the loopholes uh, that is potentially, you know, causing the uh, exception to to be triggered. Any questions here? Um... Can uh, we explain on wave management and WCR more? Uh, that's like a one hour topic, wave management, one of the first topic we are going to discuss right in the coming days. Okay. okay. WOCR. At this point in time, wave management, you can imagine like a wave. What is wave? Wave is a progression, right? It's a sound wave, light wave. You know, I don't want to give more gyan, but wave, you know, right? It's just a, anything is getting moved, it needs a wave. Things will move only if it's in the wave only, right? That is how the entire so flow of material works. we can use if flow the flow material. is high. Yeah. yeah. Say, you can take a good example, right? Uh, have you seen the people laying the uh, uh, concrete, the, the roof? Yeah in a huge apartment complex or, you know, in a, a commercial complex, if you have noticed it, right? Uh, or in your home, home also, right? If you are doing the building work, uh, if you're doing the roof laying, right? So all the preparatory works are done and you get the machine, the Ultratech cement machine or whatever, right? Concrete mixer. And then within that three, four hours window, you could imagine like 40 or 50 people are working in a wave and they are done, you know, by evening 5 p.m. they are done. If they start at the morning 10 a.m., the seven hours window is the wave management, you know. So each one knows the what they need to do. So all are working uh, as as a you know well oiled machine, and the job is done by six pm. You know the entire uh, uh, roof is done, the concrete is laid. That is wave management, you know. Okay. 
that is wave management similarly in the warehouse operations like uh, people can work in different zones you know so you release a meaningful workload a nice workload so that the people are not overwhelmed at the same time you know we are not giving them bits and pieces you know so that there is no optimization so we give them a meaningful workload and then they can uh, all work uh, in in tandem or you know in in resonance and then get the uh, thing picked packed staged labeled whatever you know and uh, serial number captured uh, consolidated whatever and then finally good to go for handshake you know to the carrier that is wave management without wave it is like shooting in dark you can you can create the task without wave also but we can't imagine a complex warehouse or you know high high volume high intensity warehouse running without wave management that sounds very ridiculous actually yeah. coming to the wocr wocr is a warehouse order creation rule it has several uh, you know configuration controls like uh, filters limits uh, packing profile uh, you know uh, many controls are there uh, the bottom line is so we are uh, building a nice package you know the, I, that's what i'm saying the kfc combo the mcdonalds combo and giving it to the operator especially if he is doing the multi order picking or you know a trolley based picking or case card based picking then uh, we are giving him a nice workload based on the four aspects you know one is the uh, the equipment consideration how much the equipment can carry and the operator you know how much he can pull the weight and other things and uh, how much distance he can travel and uh, the layout into consideration the activity area whether you can go in a s path or u path or you know whatever w path so and the fourth important thing is uh, the wave management uh, the wave has to be in alignment with the wocr uh, it, these two cannot sing a different song actually you know there should be um, uh, a, a synchronization should be there between the wave and wocr yeah it explained to a good extent yeah, yeah. is okay get visualize yeah so why ewm what is so great about ewm anyone why do we need ewm no why not wm uh, due to the advanced uh, features that it has compared to what? wm name a few no what are the advanced features uh, like a few of them that we discussed now um, few of them we discussed now like wocr wave management uh, yeah good what else anyone else said said is only listening and <laughs> no no rashi okay uh, this time Saitanya. yeah so features like what i uh, based on my understanding I see we have features like uh, uh, this was activities, and then POSC, LOSC, mm, good. which we don't see in uh, warehouse management. Although we can see at the level of bin where the stock is available or at the quant level at max, but we don't see the movement of the product when it is uh, picking or when it is getting put away. Um, and well, you in can have also the... we have DRM, right? The task and resource management, which is there since 2002. You know, we can basically split the TO into multiple mm -hmm. tasks and we can track them. You know, uh, in WM, we can only do at the max two step confirmation, a source confirmation exactly. that is departed exactly. from Chennai, but we don't know whether he reached Bangalore or not. You know, the destination confirmation only will tell, oh, okay, they reached. But nowadays, you know, we track every station, you know, whether the train is uh, really on time or not time, like Jolar Pet, you know, all that we track. That's uh, you know the TRM task and resource management used to be there, but if somebody you know pays me huge dollar and asks to implement uh, TRM also, we are not going to do it actually. You know, it's very difficult to do the configuration TRM. You know, lot of permutation combination we have to do the possible route and other things. So TRM really sucks actually. So right. TRM is the base for uh, POAC and LOAC. So as you rightly said, uh, AWM the main uh, functionality is POAC and LOAC. Uh, of course, value-added services is there in uh, uh, WM also. You know, the cross-talking is there in WM, but it's a very uh, limited functionality. Uh, okay, I mean, but I don't, when... I didn't see that much use of word centers for repacking or labeling. Uh, yeah, that's what, what I'm telling do. you. You know, VAS yeah. is there, but it's in VAS. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so those feature I found uh, very interesting, and uh, as we yeah. will discuss, 
it's it's at more detail level than the WM. I mean, we have the track of each and every movement at EWM, mm. and and uh, if somebody wants to use it hundred percent, it's very useful product. Mm. Good, Charu. Yeah, I really appreciate your uh, honest attempt. Yeah, but yeah, it's good points you raised. Uh, why EWM uh, main thing is PoAC, low AC, and uh, yeah, the VAS and the you know other activities and. I mean, Decon also. Decon also. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember I use any time in the okay. uh, well uh, slotting and all are, are there in the in the WM also. But yeah, these mm. are the few features I think that okay. had advantages. Good, good. The other, yeah, the other thing is the ECC getting sunset in another three to five years, five years actually. So uh, is that also reason because uh, that's the last moment, reason, you know, that is just a uh, yeah, that's a sacrificial goat, a scapegoat reason. That's uh, just, uh, you know, like the, yeah, that's anyway there, you know, that's going to be obsolete. But most importantly, you know, the existing WM is the dead horse, you know, it, nothing happened in the last uh, two decades or one and a half decades, you know, nothing happened majorly. SAP was very reluctant, right? When there is an EWM where the entire focus is there, uh, you know, it, this has nothing taken, this has just gone on the back seat or in the dicky, actually. You know, WM, nothing happened. The last 15 years, it was just a sleeping, um, not a giant, just a sleeping module. Nothing happened, you know. So there's no point in uh, uh, using the WM, especially in nowadays, you know, with these business uh, uh, competition, cutthroat competition or whatever, you know. Yeah, what now I'm, you... What I mean to say is ECC mm -hmm. has been into the market from EWM, EWM 7 and then various versions up to 9 before it goes into the uh, embedded S S4. But then, mm -hmm. yeah, ECC uh, ERP with EWM combination is not seen that much, right? Uh, so people held that investment into EWM. Maybe they did not feel a need of that, uh, or they did not really have that kind of a complexity in warehouse. But now it may pick up because of this uh, sunset uh, plan of ERP. And then when you're going to S4, then with the embedded feature of EWM, it might actually uh, regenerate, right? So maybe that's the reason that it is might pick up again. True, true. You know, the, the people who are proactively migrated, they all moved actually, you know, some for, I don't know exactly, maybe 5,000 implementation. I'm just giving a number, maybe here and there, you know, so 5,000 implementations already then. Uh, those, those critical customers already migrated now, you know, since 2008, 2006 and seven, five it was launched, but mm -hmm. seven and eight, it got traction. But until 14, there are a lot of bugs actually, 11 or 12 or 13 also, 2012, 13, a lot of bugs mm -hmm. were there. The last six, seven years were amazing, especially the last four years, you know, a lot of features functions released. Uh, we don't know, you know, uh, uh, suddenly, you know, the, things are going in full throttle now in everywhere, not only the, the EWM, right? Everywhere you see the things are shaping out uh, in the world. So now the last four years are, as I said, uh, several features released. Take one simple example, right? Um, we were struggling in, uh, in 2012 that uh, the GA posting from the monitor. Now mm -hmm. SAP was very, keeping it very close to their heart, actually. They said, no, we will not do give that method. Now, the, the recent functionality, it's released now. The goods issue posting can be done left, right, center, you know, from the background mm -hmm. job, from the shipping cockpit, from the, you know, a TM cockpit, from the, uh, uh, you know, monitor method. So oh. why do, you know, hold for these many years and suddenly releasing these many things, you know, it's anyway good for us now, but we are, we struggled a lot. A lot of custom developments happened. Um, so now, uh, coming back to the uh, Rajan, yeah. I have one question. So uh, in past, I have heard that uh, in WM, uh, the main feature is that we will uh, find out the exact location of the stock. But when the EWM will be deployed in the ECC, uh, after a storage location, we don't have an option for storage type and section. So in that case, we will not able to find the exact location of the bin or material. Means, is it true? Means, so uh, means, uh, so means once the EWM will be installed, there is no option for the storage. I mean, after storage location, there is no option. So we will see like an entire area, but uh, not a uh, exact bin in EWM. So this is a cons of EWM. I don't exactly understand your question, but you know, the EWM uh, monitor, you see everything. That's a single place, right? Where you can see the stocks, the available stock, the physical stock. Yeah, all the stock details are there at the EWM, meaning at the bin level. Uh, whereas in ECC, the core, you see the standard reports like whatever, right? The MMB or uh, uh, the Sparrows report. There you can see at the S-Lock level. That's what I'm saying, one level above, you know. S-Lock yeah. is an aggregated stock, you see. 
But if you want to see at the bin level, then obviously, you know, the warehouse monitor is the place. Okay, so in EWA, we will get the option of storage section and storage bin because in my experience, whatever I worked uh, there, so they told us that, uh, that this is a cons of EWM that uh, means we don't have an option beyond beyond the storage locations. So uh, means after storage type, there is no option. So we will treat as a means uh, Means, means we will treat as an entire area of the means termed at the storage location as a EWM. Means so. Mm. Means uh, in ECC we have an option, right? With in st which storage bin and sections, uh, in which corner the stock is placed, right? But EWM, do we have a options to uh, find out the exact location? Means in. Yes, uh, yes, that's the main purpose of EWM, right? We are tracking the stocks at the bin level. The warehouse management means we are tracking the stock at the bin level, you know, so every uh, SKU we know at which bin it is sitting. So the I don't know whether you are talking about the decentral. Uh, decentral means you can't see them in the, about the yeah. coordinates. Coordinates. Yeah. Do we get the same exact coordinates in EWM? XYZ yeah, we get the coordinates also, you know, XYZ. If you are doing the XYZ mapping, you can see the coordinates. You can see them in the GWL, the graphical warehouse layout. Or you can see them in the various insights, you know, the BTP uh, stuff. Yeah, if you can see the coordinates, you can see the, you know, the uh, bin, uh, whether it's empty bins or, you know, whether bins are too much cluttered or overloaded or, you know, empty bins, all that are visible. And even the movements also, you could see the heat map or, you know, those kind of things nowadays possible. Thanks to the, you know, the SAP uh, uh, various insights, insights, and we're yes. finding it difficult to pronounce it, uh, insights. Uh, that's part of the BTP business technology platform. Yeah. Uh, now let's see why EWM, right? Let's see first uh, architect pitch. You know, you being a solution architect or a senior consultant or a functional consultant. So I would say uh, EWM is built for operational complexity. Operational complexity is nothing but product complexity, process complexity, and layout complexity. All put together, I would say operational complexity. You know. You know the product complexity, right? Uh, extensive array of diversified materials, shape, size, weight, ranging from a you know tiny O-ring washer to the nuts and bolts to the uh, giant orca wheels or the mining equipment or you know the mining machinery, uh, especially the, the the BHP and you know, other companies like where they use the mining uh, huge machineries kept on the yard. So there is an assortment of shape, size, weight, volume, uh, serial managed and uh, you know batch managed, split valuated. There's something called international unique ID or something, the, the, the Putin's world, the NASA's or, you know, the defense industry, basically. And nested HU cross, what is HU? Anyone uh, wants to talk about HU handling unit? Hmm? What is HU handling unit? Feel free, guys, guys, you know, don't, yeah. It's a packing point for ACC. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, when ERP got evolved, uh, we did not have that feature. I mean, it used to be called storage unit, uh, but then when you want to actually move the group of materials as a unit, right? Uh, then it is Scoop called up. a handling unit. Scoop up. Group of materials moved as one unit is called handling unit. You know, you don't get into the nitty gritties. You move a mixed HU, meaning multiple HUs, multiple products, multiple batches are there. You as an operator, you don't bother. You just scan the ID, unique ID, and then keep moving them from one place to another place. That is the main purpose of HU. You handle them as one unit. Either it could be a pallet or cotton or you know a bag or a container or a TU. All are HUs in EWM, you know, handling units in EWM. You handle them as one unit with a unique number, and it is available in the entire supply chain, meaning the customer all the way to the you know vendor to the customer. So these are the product complexity, you know, uh, shape, size, weight, and uh, serial managed, batch managed, bit valuated. Uh, uh, catch weight management, multiple unit of measures, catch weight. What is catch weight? Any idea? Catch weight is a variable weight of a livestock. Yeah. Uh, a livestock. chicken. Yeah. yeah right. animal chicken, chicken or right, yeah, correct. Exactly. But then variable we had a CWM, a CWM functionality uh, outside. Do uh, you think that, I mean, in EWM, is it integrated? Integrated. It is integrated. CWM is integrated with the thing. So you buy a chicken, one chicken could be 500 grams, another one maybe 600 grams, yeah, different uh, weight. Uh, nevertheless, we maintain both the unit of measure, you know, pieces and kilogram. And piece is used for inventory management and the kilogram is used for, you know, inven uh, invoicing purpose, actually. That is catch weight. Two different unit of measures, which uh, no correlation 
or managed and maintained and you know, captured. That's called catch weight. Process complexity. We do a lot of activities in the EWM like value-added services, deco, kit to stock, kit to order, quality inspection. So these are the activities at the end of the day we do. Uh, VAS, value-added services, a deco, deconsolidation, kit to stock, kit to order, and Quince is quality inspection and counting. Layout complexity, right? It could be a multi-level warehouse. You receive in a first level and you store it in the ground level or other way around. Uh, there could be ID point or pick point, or we call them as P and D zones, pick and drop zones, or you know HOP handover points. Uh, the MFS warehouse, you know, the MFS is the automated storage and retrieval system warehouse using the uh, SAP standard proprietary technology called the MFS um, material flow systems. Uh, meaning, if you want to interact with the crane or a conveyor system, then we have to send the telegram messages, you know. So these are all layered complexities. Uh, it is uh, we need to track the different segments on the conveyor, so that all comes under the layered complexity. You can't directly go from A to D, you know, do the put away or pick in. It has to be A to B, B to C, C to D. That is layered complexity. Um, any questions on this complexity, the operational complexity per se? Gagan, Chaitanya. Mayur, you are okay or are you finding it uh, too much? No, Rajan. So far, okay? Are you guys catching up? Yes, yes, yes. I'll put it for the question. So can I... Yeah, yeah. I'll slow down if you want me to. Yeah, I'll slow down. Um, so the operational complexity is nothing but product, process, and layout complexities. Product we talked about, process we know. These are the processes at the end of the day we are doing, uh, mostly in the work center. Work center is nothing but the table, people doing some operations. So these are the operations people do, VAS. Uh, the kit to stock and kit to order can also be part of VAS, or it can be without VAS also, especially the kit to order can be with or without VAS. But kit to stock is always part of VAS only. Then the deco. Uh, quality inspection. So these are the things we do. Whenever we say process, no other process uh, involved other than this. Because VAS is a, you know, the umbrella term. Everything is encompassing there. Uh, like you do anything, you know, that's all VAS only. Layout complexity. We talked about the layout complexity. Anyone know what is the difference between the ID point and pick point? What is ID point? Come on, WM guys. Uh, Charu. Is a, it's a staging yeah. point, actually. It's a staging point. So when you ID use point. it for the put away, it is called ID point. When it is for mm. picking, it's called uh, pick point. It's a pick point. Yeah. yeah. So it's a two stage uh, put away or picking. Two stage. Yeah. yeah. That's correct, Bipinia. Yeah, that's correct. ID point and pick point. ID point is used in the inbound and pick point is used in the outbound. But the ID point is just a handshake point, you know, happening between a production department and a, a warehouse, where the mostly the sensor is detecting the, you know, the contour, the shape, the dimension, uh, any uh, projections or protrusions. Uh, those things are checked in the ID point. And then if everything is okay, we take the pallet in the warehouse. Otherwise, we will uh, return the pallet to the manufacturing for rework. Pick point is uh, basically, you know, in the outbound. You bring the entire HU to the floor area and do an efficient allocation. You know, that is pick point. Um, like we do in uh, Walmart, you know, we did the thing. They bring all the, uh, you know, the parachute and the Britannia biscuits, uh, huge uh, pallet load to the floor area. And then they do allocation to different stores, store number one. They ask for, uh, okay, this many parachute, uh, you know, 200 ml or 500 ml. Um, and then uh, these many biscuits, uh, okay, they do the allocation. Either it could be a store specific allocation or a product specific allocation happening. That is big point. Um, because the aisle is very dark and narrow, maybe you can't do the partialing within the aisle. So you have to bring the pallet uh, and the picker is uh, you know, not that educated, maybe he's not that efficient guy. So you don't want to trouble him, let him bring the pallet, complete pallet. Then the person who is uh, uh, you know, built for the kill, the allocation, uh, he can do expeditiously you know, the allocation. WOCR we talked about, uh, then the wave management, all right? And uh, if you know the magic of using these three uh, deadly weapons, you know, back specs, HU and uh, different unit of measures, which we call them as alternate unit of measures. And if you know a little bit of roundup, round down knowledge, so with these four things, you can do a real magic in AWM. Most of the complex scenarios can be 
uh, mapped using the scenarios. I've seen many implementations gone uh, aware or you know gone crazy, done a lot of custom developments, uh, especially you know the Coca Cola, Red Bull, those kind of industry where they deal with multiple unit of measures like uh, you know can, uh, layer, uh, boxes, crate, and pallet. So with different unit of measures, uh, and you know these things are. Uh, we can do magic, real magic we can do, if you know how to use the functionality. And uh, HU handling flexibility we talked about, there are n number of HUs are there, the nested HU, cross delivery HU, big HU, right? complex cross docking and flow through. These are the important ones. There are several scenarios supported, especially if you are an IS retail customer, then uh, there are more number of scenarios. Then slotting and rearrangement, slotting to find the best location for put away based on the demand data, the product data, the packaging data, it will find the best location. And rearrangement is nothing but the proposal, like shifting the house, you know, you're decided to move to a, uh, you know, from a two BHK to three BHK. That is the rearrangement. Slotting is saying, hey, you family sizes, you know, now uh, there are two more members, new members. So uh, you better go to a three BHK apartment, you know, that is rearrangement, okay? Whether you still want to run the, old house or you just want to move them and then later you update the product master uh, that's your call right based on the uh, workforce available or uh, you know you can just live with that if there is not much of a quantity that is rearrangement slotting and rearrangement goes hand in hand and the resource optimization we talked about the wo's you know merging splitting uh, jacking up the priority yeah all that are resource optimization and these are sap proprietary technology you know or of uh, uh, there are some 500 uh, screens and uh, almost 180 uh, transactions or whatever in the SAP standard RF. But keep in mind, the standard RF will not fit in any implementation. We have to tweak it or you know fine tune it so that you know it would be uh, adapted to the requirement of any client. Uh, but nowadays, people are very crazy. They go for API and you know the Angular front end or you know they want the look and feel. But SAP is provided the web GUI now, you know, so that the CSS uh, look and feel are uh, easily done. No need to, you know, bet on a developer. Um, and we talked about the exceptions, right? In EWM, it can handle uh, 30 plus exceptions. Uh. So any questions on the architect pitch? Now you could see why EWM, as rightly said by Charu, POSC, LOSC, you know, process oriented storage control and layered oriented storage control, uh, WOCR, wave management, uh, it sucks in uh, the LE, the logistics or LE wave management. The entire delivery has to be in a single wave. You know, a lot of limitations. Uh, people were developing uh, so many code for the wave management. Uh, but here in EWM, a single delivery line can be in uh, three different wave. You know, the classical example is the triple one. Uh, triple one, the bar we put on the forehead, you know, to connect to the God, the, the broadband signal. So. Uh, 100 is a pallet and 10 is a carton and one is each, you know, that's a triple one. Three different quantities stored in three different storage types. That's called zone-based picking, you know. So meaning uh, one delivery line can be in three different wave. That is wave management, ultimate flexibility in EWM. Whereas the ECC wave, uh, the entire delivery, the outbound delivery has to be in a single wave. That one is a huge limitation or huge constraint. Any questions on the architect pitch? So you should be able to tell, right? Why EWM? Sharu? Have... Huh? Yeah, com I agree, uh, Rajan. I mean, whatever you mentioned so far, uh, yeah, completely agree. Hmm. Rajan, I have one question. So, See, the additional complexity for, for the EWM we said, right? Uh, but as the size and the complexity increase, uh, enterprises might also think of the 3PL option, like completely outsourcing warehouse function. I mean, after all, warehousing is not the core competency for which they are known. Their, comp their core competency is majorly into the product design, manufacturing, not the distribution threat, right? So that's the enabler thing. So people or the companies might go for the 3PL. So if they are going for a 3PL, then that question does not arise. I mean, they are then getting rid of the WMS entirely and then 3PL have to manage that WMS and they just have to take care of the integration with their ERP. So the question is, do you see the EWM penetration more into the manufacturing companies or more for the distribution and the 3PL 
kind of setups. That's a good point, Bipin. You know, it's just an amazing thing. So, um, yeah. So I've seen the people like you know, like uh, uh, what the the take the example of ASML, you know, or any company for that matter. Now, if as you said, the complexity is more, then it's all outsourced, you know. So there are two things. One is the 3PL coming with their own systems, or you implement SAP AWM. You know, along with the 3PL uh, key stakeholders, and then you ask them to run your SAP system. You know, they just uh, perform uh, the functions. Uh, you know, in your SAP EWM only. And how they manage, you know, how they run the two horses together, right? The horses, you know, it's up to them actually. How they want to update their own system, it's up to them. But uh, at the end of the day, you are, uh, you know, giving them the mandate to 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 operate in the EWM system. You know, because we are uh, particular about the, you know. At the same time, we are outsourcing them. At the, uh, at the same time, we don't want to lose the control or the you know the uh, business critical information. You know, uh, there are many industries still they are keeping it and then asking the three PL to run the SAP implemented EWM rather than you know purely uh, keeping it as a slave system or a black box. So. And as okay. you said, the other team is evolving the manufacturing thing, right? When we want to issue to production and other thing, that's again you can deploy the three PL uh, personnel. At the end of the day, these are all uh, you know transient workforce only. So those guys can be uh, you know a rotational people only, right? Uh, every three months or every six months, the people keep coming and going. So at the end of the day, we want a efficient process, a streamlined, simple, and intuitive process only. Simple. That's it. That's the bottom line. Whether three PL is bringing it or you are uh, providing it. Uh, it's a call you're taking, right? Uh, the management or the key guys are uh, taking a call. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense, okay. Bipin. Yeah. See, I mean, what I think is uh, your customer changes, right? If it is going for manufacturing, uh, EWM kind of setup, then your customer is manufacturing customer. And mm -hmm. if it is going to be the outsource to the 3PL, and 3PL have the liberty to use or whatever they're using today, right? I don't. I didn't find actually most of the 3PL companies are using SAP products or SAP EWM, EWM or EWM kind of thing. EWM scores more on the integration aspects with the ERP, right? Uh, but there are a lot of standalone WMS like Manhattan, Red Prairie, uh, Let's Do, Oracle, and all. Uh, even the major uh, 3PL, like, I mean, even if you say Amazon, Amazon, of course, and they also don't use SAP. So, yeah, but then, I mean, your perspective changes as per the customer. Yeah, it depends on, you know, like, oh, uh, uh, you know, business, uh, uh, what, what business you're running? Are you ASML or just, uh, you know, FMCG, uh, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm. Okay. You know, the confidentiality, the, the product critical nature and other things, many things are there, you know, you just want to, uh, uh, yeah, ask him to run everything here and then maybe you know once in a week or once in three days you know let them take a feed for their uh, higher level reporting purpose actually you know some uh, yeah uh, data you know some critical data they just avoid and then the mundane data they take and then do it yeah it depends actually as you said you know if they have the sophisticated system obviously the 3pl would be having their uh, uh, built-in complex systems only but but still but still you know ewm is also best of breed you know it can match uh, at least, you know, yeah, sixth round or seventh round in the boxing you know, <laughs> to the blue yonders. And uh, I don't know about the red prairie mm -hmm. and Manhattan. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, EWM has evolved. Keep in mind that the last 15 years, especially the last six, seven years, or like, too many things are introduced now. So the sales pitch, these are all, you know, for the pre sales consultants, you know, the capable of handling not only complex warehouses, but also the bit size and, you know, simple warehouses also. Thanks to the BMW, the synchronous uh, goods movement is there. You go to the MIGO, you post a material document directly, a task is created, you know. So that is the synchronous posting. Zone. It's called synchronous posting. And if you are an embedded customer, you can operation, you know, it could be simple operation. No need to worry about the inbound delivery and, you know, the, the ID, the ODO, the OD. All the documents are eliminated, actually. Anyway, the outbound delivery is required. That's a different story. But at least the inbound delivery is not required. Uh, if you want to do posting changes or, you know, other uh, movements like, uh, uh, ad hoc goods issue or two, two not one, two twenty one, two thirty one. You can do it in Migo, you know. Thanks to the synchronous postings, uh, BMW. As for in memory system, I would say Siri, S A R I, simplification, innovation. Uh, you know, uh, 
uh, avoiding the data duplication or redundancy, the integration. So these are the more four major themes. As you rightly said, the integration is SAP strength actually, uh, but that, that is not the only strength now, you know, the SAP has strengthened the other areas as well in terms of more features and capabilities now. But, but still, there could be some catching up. I'm not they, like they missed the opportunity in the robotic things, you know, like uh, uh, multi channel support. Uh, you can collaborate with your, uh, uh, you know, omni channel. Uh, basically, it's just an omni channel. The person can be coming in any, any channel. Uh, in depth integration, uh, as I said, uh, especially with the PP and uh, QM. TM is also evolved now, it's quite robust now. TM, uh, the ASR. Advanced shipping and receiving ASR uh, integration, especially introduced for the embedded customer, and also other integration areas like GTS, uh, CRM, APO, and EHS, environment, health, and safety, and uh, you know the global trade solutions or something. GTS, where uh, you are uh, X bonding, D bonding, your uh, you know licenses and your uh, all, all it's getting now more interesting now, right? For the with the sanctions uh, applied in Russia and other things, so. It's like GTS is more interesting module now, you know, and you should know the GTS and EWM integration. Um, and also industry specific flavors they're releasing, like retail specific uh, cross docking scenarios and, you know, apparel footwear solutions, uh, repetitive manufacturing specific uh, production integration scenarios. Then we talked about the automated warehouse integration you know, uh, using the SAP's uh, MFS or the traditional the WCU, the IDOC mechanism or the web services or, you know, yeah. So these are the sales pitch actually, you know, network focus, it's no more an enterprise focus, it's the network focus. You can collaborate with your vendor, the shipping logistics, the 3PL, uh, freight forward or, um, yeah. The dock appointment scheduler and, you know, uh, subcontracting workforce working in your warehouse on the VAS activities, you can track them. And also the labor management, all, all giving a network focus, uh, um, the portals, you know, where uh, the carrier themselves can do the appointment booking. And we talked about the analytics reporting. There are n number of tools, uh, like the warehouse monitor, the most important one, then the cockpit, uh, warehouse cockpit. Uh, and the important one now is the Fiori uh, analytics, you know, the Fiori uh, KPI analytics, uh, which is readily available. Then the digital next generation adoption. And finally, anyway, WM is getting obsolete or sunset by 2027 or 2025, I'm not sure. And most importantly, nothing happened in the past decade or you know more than that as well. Uh, we talked about the prediction. Any, any questions on the YEW? Yeah. Rajan, uh, one question. Are we going to cover the uh, EWM and GTS integration also? As a part EWM, of this GTS? I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so if, in case you have any material on the EWM GTS integration, um, and if you can share that, it would be very helpful. Actually, we are trying to implement in our client, but we are struggling with the uh, the integration steps. So we have, but that is a very old document. I think it is 2012 document from SAP, but that's not really helping us out. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. In case okay. you have anything, uh, it will be grateful. Sure. Hello, everyone. Please complete the feedback when you get a chance and confirm once then. Okay. 1038. Yeah. We started at what, nine o'clock, right? Uh, you guys want a short break? Uh, 1040. We'll just break for 10 minutes and then reconvene. Yeah. The type of warehouses we saw production, distribution, warehouse, service parts. The complex one is a mix of distribution center and the service parts. It's a complex one. As I said, you know, nothing uh, simple nowadays. You know, everything is getting complex. More uh, chat GPTs and other things are coming. So uh, life is getting more complicated now. And yeah, we need to keep abreast with that. Now, uh, these are the industries, pretty much all the industries, you know, uh, best fit for EWM. Automotive, uh, chemical, uh, consumer goods, retail, life science, high tech, service parts. You know, these are the indicative ones, not a complete one, but just an indicative one. There could be overlaps, not a problem. For example, uh, if you take the consumer goods, the catch weight, a batch management, uh, high volume business, uh, chemical batch management, again, quality management, transportation, cross docking, transit warehouse, building, uh, service parts, you know, do the kitting, product obsolescence and uh, slot in, 
high tech again serial number management the production supply integration uh, the uh, mineral companies the, you know, the the mining companies natural resources upstream where you have the coal or iron ore aluminum you know you just have a huge pile of uh, that lot uh, the 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 adanis and the, the bhps and those things there is no great fit for ewm uh, continuous process industry like steel industry power industry where the material you know flows in the pipeline like the utility industries uh, not much of a scope for ewm um, let's take a break for 10 minutes and then uh, uh we'll just run the, the last one and a half one one or ten minutes yeah from there is it okay yeah that would be helpful thanks right uh so uh sorry to interrupt you this is nitin from zaran tech tech support uh so we have posted the uh, trainer feedback form in the chat box so we request everyone to fill that form which is mandatory Okay, talk to you guys in ten minutes from now. Shall Shall we start or wait for a couple of more minutes? If you can raise your hands, you can see the presence. I think most of us are here. So most of start. you guys are there. Okay. okay. So do you find between uh, the experienced guys Charu, Gagan, Chaitanya? Yeah, we are back. No, no, I'm saying the uh, the so far is it? Uh, yeah, I mean the background which, was okay. Background mm, was okay. That background was is okay. Much, mm. That was much needed at uh, for the MM mm. interview. Mm. Mm. That's why we mm. need to mm. venture into it. Mm. You can mm. also actually talk about a little about the. Uh, Career uh, aspects of the EWM. I mean, where they where we should really focus on um, how the EWM is further evolving. Do we need as for background uh, must for the EWM uh, and those kind Not of things? Really, right? More of the career aspects. Just, uh, yeah. yeah, more of yeah. Any functional role, just a more of uh, the business nuances only. You know, uh, functionality. One hand, you should know the functionality. At the end of the day, we are just. Uh, activating some check boxes radio button and maintaining some table entry you know that's what we are doing as a consultant but we should know the business uh, uh, you know nuances and somewhere we had to register it and uh, and then you know able to uh, map them with the features that's it so we should know more of the functions and you know you have to store them the different scenarios you will find to a good extent nowadays it's available you know in the in the internet but but still there are a lot of scenarios you know why ewm is such a interesting module because you know on the one hand we have the human being second uh, aspect is the material as it's talked about you know the shape size variety of uh, you know way of dealing the goods uh, handling the goods the third thing is just uh, equipment right uh, you are talking about a robot a drone and you know like uh, different types of uh, toy to equipment the mhes uh, so these all different dimensions all put together uh, brings in more flavors or more scenarios more variations you know so that's why the ewm is an interesting module you know, n number of scenarios not like a typical mm right you raise a po and then you do the gr based uh, thing uh, invoice verification and and standard scenarios like a po scenario consignment subcon it's all sort of type casted or you know known thing actually but here uh, the uh, the way the people deal the picking put away replenishment you know there are more scenarios That's right. why EWM so that, is interesting. <laughs> but uh, uh, as a product gets niche, uh, their market also gets a uh, bit compressed because I know consultants who started with EWM, but then they also have to switch over to the SAP WM when they run their projects, right? So, uh, and my question was from that perspective that if I mean if you are more like MM WM EWM, you have no problem. You can always switch over to WM EWM DWM and all those things. But then, for the newcomer who started like a EWM without an EWMS background, you think that he should also back it up with the transport management GTS kind of skills and make it as a combined supply chain execution. Kind yeah, of the SAP's direction is there, right? So if you are uh, knowing uh, the EWM, okay, 
and uh, EWM, of course, you know, you should know the uh, the, the new newer aspects of you know the just in time, just in sequence, and and, and then the uh, IoT integration, and you know the robot also. You know, nowadays we have the robot integration, and um, with TM, and uh, the third aspect is your uh, the same SAP logistics only. We have to just simply align with the SAP uh, uh, way of structuring the things. You know, the DDMRP. Um, not the DDMRP, the, sorry, the AATP, right? The advanced uh, ATP. Mm. And uh, along with that, the event management, whatever extent we know, right? Uh, the outside world, uh, within the world we know, and yard logistics. Yeah. These are the execution uh, components, you know? So the planning is a different uh, end of the spectrum, right? The other end of the spectrum. So if you're an execution, uh, you just need to focus on the execution only. The warehouse management, transportation management, a uh, bit of event management, and um, the RF and RFID, right? Uh, integrating with the devices and the, all the interfaces, you know, plus, plus, plus your uh, yard logistics. So this would be good, good combination, I would say. Okay. No need and to worry for the 10 uh, years. <laughs> and you can also add about the certification part. Uh, I see that SAP has split the EWM certification as 100 to 110 or 120 or, mm. or even this labor management and all those are separate. Yeah, funds, sure. Right? I will, I will so know. yeah, so you can talk about those and then what's associate level, what's the proficient level, right? So you can also give some glimpse about that part. I'm sure that some of us would want to actually go for certification. So mm. uh, after some hands on, so. Maybe sure. that will be helpful, yeah. Yeah, SAP has a lot of like six to seven course codes are there, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's just uh, do this uh, second second off, second innings. Now, you know, right, we are talking about the integration, sales and the distribution. We have the uh, ATP, the, you know, the returns, the advanced returns management. Anyone worked in the ARM uh, implementation? Advanced returns management implementation. Huh? Gagan, because no one worked in the ARM. Hello, am I audible? All good? No, right? Okay. So the ARM is a nice uh, module. You know, it's there for quite a long time, I would say, four or five years, more than that as well. So ARM uh, is having a good integration with the EWM, I know. Um, then the we talked about the advanced ATP, uh, which is a, you know the the GATP equivalent. Uh, then uh, production planning is uh, amazing. You know, production planning will will keep you occupied for at least three months. I would say, you know, if you could get the hands on in your server, uh, how to configure the JIT and JIS and you know the Kanbans and um, the distribution equipment or the tugger train. So that would be a great area. Production planning is just uh, too many things happen, and a uh, lot of people are you know investing and um, finding a lot of opportunities there, uh, especially with the, uh, the the concepts like that we talked about, simplified concepts, just in time concepts, and also the MES integration. You know the integration with the um, uh, manufacturing execution systems or MIA. And EHS is a small module anyway. Nothing great about it. Uh, GTS. Complaints, import, export regulations, uh, the uh, the sanctioning, the you know the customs bonded warehouse. Quality management is again robust one with uh, almost all the functions of QM are supported. It could be a lot summary or recurring inspection or a you know skip lot. Uh, you can take the sample uh, per HU and um, pre sampling. Pre sampling means uh, before GR you are doing the uh, sampling and calling the UD. You know. Uh, uh, so the quality management, there are a lot of scenarios supported in EWM. Of course, the outbound scenarios are not supported. Digital logistics. So EWM is no more part of the uh, LE. You know, the WM was part of the LE, logistics execution. But EWM is part of the digital logistics solution of SAP. You know, along with that, the TM and uh, yard logistics are uh, going hand in hand uh, with RFID, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, RFID is part of the uh, global digital supply chain or part of digital, I'm not sure, but TM and your logistics, of course. And ASR is just a TM advanced version uh, for uh, embedded customer, um, meaning the integration is more uh, uh, simplified, you know, using the uh, uh, freight order as a common document, rather than uh, putting the bet on the TU transportation unit. Um, and this we know, the batch uh, 
traceability and you know the RFID integration. RF and RFID, there are different things. Keep in mind uh, when we say RF, uh, the simple radio frequency where we communicate with our uh, barcode, the mobile devices, uh, the the communication points will be there and it will capture the data and it will uh, communicate real time to the you know the SAP backend system. That is RF. But RFID means the identification is there in the tag. So it could be an active tag or a passive tag, and you know it can hold more data. And um, like your uh, vehicle, you know, crossing the toll booth, uh, and it's automatically captured, and uh, the amount is directed. You know, that is tag RFID integration. Okay, so uh, if you look at the optimization angle, these are just uh, you know lecturing slides only. Don't uh, take too much, but just try to understand as much as you can. Uh, if you if you just want to put EWM on the optimization uh, lens, so these are the things should come in your mind. You know, the the KFC combo, the internal routing, not going from A to D, rather B to C, C to D, slotting to find the optimal uh, uh, look. I told you, put away is uh, paramount. Put put away is most critical, right? Once the job is done, put away is properly done. Then uh, you know, eighty percent of the job is done. Interleaving. Uh, for internal movements. What is interleaving? Anyone, any any guess? What is interleaving? Huh? No idea, interleaving. So the uh, forklift operator toggling between the putaway and picking is interleaving because we don't want him to uh, uh, travel empty. That's called uh, dead dating. No, we don't want a dead dating scenario. Especially the crane, where now the energy is critical, right? At least in the Europe, you know, they face the energy crisis. So we don't expect the equipment or the operator or the forklift traveling empty, you know, all the way doing the put away and coming back and again doing the put away. No, it's ridiculous. If the picking is not um, uh, for tomorrow's picking, if he has to do, so he can toggle between the, uh, you know, put away and picking. That's called interleaving. Especially the crane systems, uh, it can toggle between the put away and picking. That is interleaving. Um, and then the cartonization and pallet planning for efficient, uh, you know, uh, loading and transportation cost optimization, and uh, you know, uh, to avoid any accidents in the on the road. So the cartonization and pallet planning, basically to save the cost on the transportation. Bay management we talked about, it guaranteed that you know the items are picked and uh, or at the um, um, a gate, you know, like the, uh, the airport gate, you have to be at the right time. So. The way management will ensure uh, uh, that your items are picked, packed, and staged, and uh, good to go for loading. Stock consolidation we talked about. Uh, mm -hmm. Frequently, you need to consolidate the stocks, merge the quantities, and um, and relieve the bin so there's more space available. You know, just in case if the same product being at multiple locations. Uh, but if one product is dedicated for one location, uh, you know, it's not applicable much. Uh, uh, any questions on this slide? Uh, and the previous one. Mm -hmm. My dear. Oh, oh. Okay. Uh, production integration. Uh, I mean, I don't want to talk again. So we talked about all the aspects. MES integration is one more uh, area where, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things are uh, shaping up. Now, this is one more interesting one, the just-in-time, just-in-sequence call. It's a pretty new one, the next generation uh, JIT. So there's a nice dashboard or a Fury application. From there, uh, they can look at a holistic demand and uh, uh, you know the supply picture for the PSAs, and they can press the button. You know, So when they press the button, uh, we are talking about this scenario only, where uh, it's served from the warehouse. We don't bother about the goods coming from the external supplier or you know the other production line. So these are all the MM, right? The scheduling agreement, the just-in-time uh, uh, things. Bottom line is uh, it is served immediately, you know, and in the proper sequence also, meaning uh, there would be a tugger train and it will go and it drop in multiple PSA locations. So, so that is a stock transfer. And along with the, the tugger train, uh, or the distribution equipment, uh, it has more synergy. So this is the tugger train I'm talking about, you know, like the uh, shuttle train, uh, you know, uh, having multiple compartments, um, dolly or whatever, and then it goes to multiple PSA. It drops in line one, then it, it goes to the, it's basically a tour, you know, 
the tucker train loading and then unloading at different PSAs. So this has a good, uh, you know, synergy with the just-in-time calls and just-in-sequence call. So just-in-time, just-in-sequence, along with your, uh, you know, distribution equipment, you can imagine um, the warehouse uh, dispatching the goods in this kind of setup, and then uh, this guy driver is going to multiple PSA and dropping the different, you know, uh, items, especially in the automotive industry. Um, are you guys with me? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Then the PM integration, that's one more area. We were struggled, you know, when we did the implementation for one of the company, the plant maintenance uh, integration. Now it's easier, you know, there is a straightforward native solution available for uh, same like production order. When you release the plant maintenance order, there will be delivery created, outbound delivery, and uh, you can do the pick pack stage and uh, goods issue. So the PM order integration is there now, you know, which is not there uh, prior to 2020 or so e-commerce readiness is there. Customer returns, there's a nice uh, Fury application, pick by cart application. This is the cart, you know, trolley, you are moving the trolley or the cart uh, with the maximum 25 compartments, you know. So you marry the Pikachu to each compartment. Uh, it's called preparatory step, preparatory step. And then you do the picking and then you bring it and drop it at the pack work center or at the staging bay, you know. So you marry HU number one to slot number, whatever, you know, this is a lower level. This is a second level, the third level, fourth level, fifth level, and each level has five slots. Um, typical for an e-commerce industry, you know, they go with the cart and then they bring the huge amount of quantities and to the pack station. Then the pack outbound delivery fury application is there with the image and, uh, you know, uh, you can transfer the material from left to right to the shipping cartons. Uh, these are all e-commerce readiness and labor management, a uh, big topic, uh, you know, labor is not a big deal, at least in India and uh, in US also, I don't think big deal. Still people are there for 30K, 40K, you know. So, but but, but in the Europe region, yeah, maybe. Uh, but labor management is now very robust now, I would say. Uh, we can capture the time and attendance and, um, you know, there are a lot of master data, the processor master, the team and shift and shift sequence and, uh, you know, um, even we can maintain the uh, personal fatigue and delay factors. Like a person is hit with the COVID, uh, you can just uh, put him in 70% efficiency or you, know, you can just give him a fair uh, um, you know, treatment rather than expecting 100% or 80% based on his experience because he's down and then he's just you know, in uh, recovering or recu whatever, recuperating. So labor standards are there, you know, we can maintain the uh, benchmarkings, right? The expected time, the planned time based on the engineering labor standards. And um, uh, if you're not happy with the standard engineering standards, engineering labor standards, you can put some more complex calculations, you know, using the BRF uh, rule engine. You can build the equation, the formulas, and then expressions and uh, calculate for the cotton or, you know, certain issues, uh, how much time you need to pick. And, you know, uh, the travel distance is one thing. And the actual picking time is a different thing. Picking and you know packing times are different. At the end of the day, we are comparing the um, we are comparing the planned time and actual time, and sending the report to the HR you know for incentive and uh, yeah incentive calculations basically. That's labor management. You track, measure, report, and lay plan continuously. Measure continuously track him and then measure and report. So I talked about the KPA dashboard. This is a SAP standard offering. There are 90 uh, tiles are there. Uh, imagine you can uh, have two or three, uh, you know, giant um, uh, Samsung LED TVs on the warehouse and they know, everyone knows, uh, it's quite transparent warehouse. So people know what uh, is expected, you know, for today or for the coming three, two to three days. The operational dashboard, we can uh, configure the tiles based on the different uh, departments within the warehouse, like outbound people, uh, they want to see only the outbound relevant uh, you know, KPIs, uh, inbound KPIs or you know, replenishment KPIs. And so these KPIs are uh, consuming the 33 series views. Uh, if you know how to create more views or manipulate the views, you can create more tiles and you know, the more views can be also be. I, I know some um, consulting companies, they have some 200 or 300, 200 KPIs at least, you know, if not 300, 200 KPIs. Um, so you can, yeah buy it from them if you if you if you are you know, reluctant to develop them and then i talked about the monitor uh, where is monitor uh, that's a place single place 
unlike wm right you have to go to multiple transaction to display the stock to uh, to the you know track the product everything you can do pretty much you know you're going to see that uh, amazing things in a single place uh, the monitor is a single place where the supervisor uh, would be doing the operations um, running or uh, running the operations 465 standard reports are there any questions guys on this uh, lecturing slides just a you know high level slides don't worry much uh, just try to understand and then maybe you can you know see the areas where you need to focus and uh, you know appreciate it at a very high level yeah. um all good no questions Raj, we will uh, show in the system also no means how we are doing the unloading packing and all means in yeah, yeah that's what we are going to do you know i have the 40 odd scenarios configured and okay. we will, you know, dirty our hands. We will know how to do the configuration and you know, practice the exercises. So time is up to you, right? We are planning of three hours. So ideally, I will be giving the last 30 minutes to you or 40 minutes to you guys. But if you feel that you can take it as a homework and, you know, wants to hear me more, I am, I'm still okay. I'm still okay. So we can plan that out or we can go with the, you know, majority or you can take sides opinion also. If you guys want to practice uh, 30 or 40 minutes within this uh, three hour window, it's still okay for me. Okay, so we can keep Ajay. talking. Uh, sorry, sorry. Ajay, so you just talked about what was before and what is now. So EWM has evolved in last decade from EWM 7 to 9 to 9.5 and now to embedded into them. So mm -hmm. for the new starters like us, do uh, you think that we should focus more on the embedded EWM or we should know also the evolution because the project that we get assigned does not guarantee whether it will be embedded on them it might be when they decentralize like embedded seven, and decentralized doesn't eight. matter right? the process wise you know the function wise all same only only thing is the interface you know there's a catch the data flowing between the two systems only is the crux otherwise the feature the process mapping you know the options are available i would say pretty much 99 or 98 percent is same yeah, here and okay. there, there could be some advantage, disadvantage, but uh, a good amount of percentage, 95 percent, let's put it 95 per percentage, the same processes, same scenarios only, you know. So whether you are working in a decentralized or embedded doesn't matter in terms of process mapping, but you need to know the, uh, you know, the interface things only. For example, if you are working in a decentralized, you should know the DRF, you should have the expertise in IDOCs, you know. And also uh, uh, the headache will come for the production support guys more, you know, for the decentralized. But embedded customers, the production support would be uh, comparatively less. And if the more you use the synchronous postings, the queues would be uh, drastically reduced, you know. But otherwise, uh, whether you're embedded or decentral, uh, the skill set remains same. Additional skill set required for decentral, especially for uh, the data migration, the, the, the data movement, you know, the master data and uh, mostly master data, right? Transactional data, there is no escape in. Bipin? Okay. Yeah. But but you need to understand that, as I said, the, as a consultant, right, your core focus should be on the scenarios only, you know. Uh, you should just have the curiosity to, you know, know about the business scenarios, okay, and register them and how to handle them in EWM. Yeah. Now we talked about the uh, mobile device, right, uh, the SAP mobile device, the uh, ITS, uh, as we speak, right, that's uh, SAP's recommendation. Still, the Mobile GUI is the current one, you know, the old one, the ITS mobile. There's a subtle difference between the ITS mobile and the mobile GUI. The mobile GUI is having the own screen personas and, you know, uh, at the end of the day, both are HTTP, HTTP the browser-based ones only. But here, uh, the framework is there. Uh, the framework means uh, the step flow logic, uh, you know, what are the PAI, the PBO modules, process before uh, output and process after input modules. Are basically, the flow, step flow. Uh, is easy to configure and to you know develop. Uh, we are writing on the framework only. Both the things are writing, you know, whether a web GUI or a standard IT is uh, mobile. Both of them are writing on the framework only. But here the advantage is, uh, you know, it's easy to uh, modify the look and feel using the SAP screen personas, the push button, the size of the screen uh, adjustments, the color. These are very easy, you know, no need to uh, uh, do a major development and you know wait for the developer. So the SAP's recommendation is mobile GUI and uh, uh, at the same time leveraging the framework. Um, 
but if you want to develop uh, using the api uh, that, that kind of uh, you know people are also there uh, yeah and we said no this is the ultimate thing you know the sap is a uh, yarns like the passive storage to the you know uh, cloud technology robotics uh, voice picking uh, uh, these are there voice picking is there uh, uh, since 2000 or 2005 you know voice picking is there it's not a new thing but yeah augmented reality you know the smart glasses and uh, you know uh, the automation uh, value added services these are all giving a uh, sort of multi channel or omni channel requirements then compare the imwm now this is interesting you know i want you guys to open up and you know uh, make it more interactive the wm and ewm comparison these are the two three slides uh, if you missed the opportunity then you know uh, especially the wm guys feel free to uh, appreciate and you know ask me or challenge me so the wm uh, these are again not a great thing but just uh, wm is meant for uh, uh, medium high complex ewm is meant for large complex high volume warehouses uh, these are okay medium compression don't worry about the column just ignore the column uh, traceability visibility yeah. used to be the critical aspects those days those days means uh, the, the late 90s or the early 2000 uh, but now traceability and visibility is guaranteed you know guaranteed so now we are talking about efficiency yeah. or insights or space optimization these are the things which are taken the front seat um to assignment to queue and prioritization splitting the to it's, it's not that uh, user friendly or it's very cumbersome but here it's easy you know you can just uh, do many things using the monitor method here uh, in ewm uh, hu with the aum um, it's a nightmare because the hu activation is at the storage location level but here i told you uh, if you know the uh, hu packaging specification and different unit of measures with rounding you can be a magician you know you can do real magic in the world and then i told you the multi step put away the poc loc uh, it's uh, next to impossible you know in the trm using the trm yeah? very few implementations that they have gone for trm but uh, trm is quite difficult to do the poc loc mapping but now the ewm poc loc configuration uh, it's easier to configure the internal routing these are just a comparison between wm and ewm uh, and you know the sap is a uh, earlier offering but now slowly they are closing the shops uh, im only it will be always there lean wm wm right lean wm and wm uh, is there since 1992 and decentral wm is there since 2000 uh, the decentral wm plus trm trm also is there since 2002 so the dwm and trm plus wm of course wm and dwm are one and the same you know it's in a different box that's it you know there's no great thing about it at the end of the day it's all transfer orders only whether you do it in the same box or in a different box that is decentral wm so all these three are the predecessor of you know ewm maybe something taken from red prairie manhattan or blue yonder or whatever so the ewm is there almost now uh, 15 18 years now you know ewm based on the operational complexity and the transactional volume you know operational complexity the product process and layout complexity are put together is called operational complexity any questions on this slide uh, hmm? the charu vikas i have a, yeah i have other way round some lacking i find in ewm um like master data is um, not uh, that well synced uh, between the uh, s4 and uh, ewm master data for an example uh, say material is blocked uh, for say uh, for sales order i mean for issuing out at ecc level or s4 level that will not stop the issue at ewm in ewm and what will happen that the issue will happen in ewm and that queue will stuck in the s4 and that's no, a good uh, point yeah yeah and other way around i mean i would give other example like i mean master data mostly um other thing is like uh, 
if you have a shelf expiration date or, or uh, that particular tab is updated in the material master uh, in plant storage view, that is that is updated in the EWM master data to certain extent, but you know, few indicators like expiration indicator or those are not updated. So, you know, system will allow you to do the transaction in EWM, whereas it will not happen in the SPOR. And mm -hmm. another point which I find very bad about the, uh, we are using 1909 version. Uh, which is very bad that you cannot reverse the good receipt in EWM. Uh, I mean, mm. once it is put away. Good receipt mm. we can do, but once it is put away, we cannot reverse it. And if you find any discrepancy or while updating the S4 or any issue with the S4, then mm. it's a it's a that's a bad, bad job to do. I mean, uh, we have to do I mean left, yeah. right to adjust that in uh, S4. So these are few things uh, I understand in 2020 version, it will be, I mean, this GR problem will be sorted out in the next version. But master data, that syncing, I think that is, a, uh, that is not a, uh, done well. Yeah, agreed, Charu. You know, just to uh, give my point of view, uh, agreed, the master data, uh, EWM at the end of the day, you know, we are, uh, just pulling only some, uh, let's say, you know, out of thousand fields, we are just pulling some um, twenty odd field or thirty odd fields only. We are pulling, you know, and as you said, the blocking uh, things, you know, for whatever reasons, the cross plant status, the uh, explant status, yeah, yeah. these things are not mapped. You know, I agree with you. Uh, that's a, a, you know, SAP uh, should do something on that. But uh, the remaining points, I don't agree really. You know, meaning uh, the shelf life is more sophisticated. You know, it's all completely handled in EWM, whether it's a BBD or SLED or the remaining shelf life, the maturation time, all are handled uh, properly in EWM. Uh, you know, it the can- The expiration indicator challenge. is not there. Uh, yeah. we, we are recently facing that issue. Uh, the expiration okay. indicator is not there in the EWM master data. And what is happening is, once you have the expiration indicator in the material master, it it mandates you to enter the production date when you are posting the good receipt in ECC. Whereas, yeah, it is. Okay. whereas okay. it is not stopping you in the EWM because there is no indicator. You have the shelf life uh, numbers, like you have the, what should be the shelf life, what should be the minimum remaining shelf life, and all those are there, but the indicator is missing uh, or that is not really working. I, I think the indicator is there, but it's not working. So right now we are facing the problem. We have a, a few okay. plants uh, which are supposed to have those values, and EWM plants are not no supposed problem. to then have those values. No problem. Then we will take it offline. You know, yeah, yeah. let me know, yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. because you are talking about a spe specific indicator. Let's yeah, see. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, at least I can vouch for the shelf life related sure, attributes. Sure, the sure. frame, it's quite sure. uh, you know matching there. And the okay. third aspect, you know, the GR. Uh, you have the receiving team yeah. and, you know, you have the put away team, you have the yeah, number yeah. of ways to do the GR, but still yeah. if you miss everything and, you know, you have to reverse it, yeah, SAP um, EWM doesn't support that because, you know, you have all the opportunity and it's not a very disciplined warehouse, you know, you have the multiple gate check, but still right, if you are right. done with it, this is a German, you know, uh, expression, but yeah, uh, because, it's supported I mean, in WM, it's supported right. in WM, you know, meaning you can reverse, even after a month also we can reverse yeah. it. I mean, WM so, master data being in the same box, um, being in the same box, it always hold you if something, some master data is not correct or mm -hmm. missing. But in case of EWM, although it's in the one box embedded, we say it is embedded, but it is treated as the two different things. Two, two different right. instances, yeah, there's no yeah. escaping. It's like eating the ceiling and coming back, you know. Correct. So, uh, but yeah, if you miss all the opportunities, then uh, there's no way to, you know, reverse the loop. Uh, you have to start a new loop by return yeah. view only, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as I said rightly, you know, SAP oh, is uh, releasing something. Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, it will come. Yeah, definitely. It will come. That's a good point, Charu. I appreciate it. You know, you're just, uh, the three points, what you said is like, uh, at least the first one is a real pain. The remaining yeah. two also, you know, depending on the yeah, thing. Now, comparison of WM and EWM, these are the clear advantage, like right? the full moon or the new moon or whatever. So the deco is not there. Slotting rearrangement was not there. Labor management, the, the multi-client warehousing, to a certain extent only it was supporting. Then the most important one is the layout modeling, you know, the POSC, the LOSC, the internal routing. These are the clear winners, you know, EWM, great advantage of EWM vis-a-vis uh, -vis the WM, you know, the EGR concept, the expected GR, 
uh, warehouse automation mfs you know it is a nightmare again using the trm with custom development uh, uh, the people used to struggle uh, those days you know prior to 2010 or 2008 so now these are the main advantage but with regards to the put away strategies the remove strategies not a big deal you know maybe 20% or 30% added uh, but but pretty much you know that the existing strategies if you know wm uh, you can easily migrate to ewm you know with regards to put away and remove strategies and uh, uh, wave management a uh, major thing i told you the triple one uh, here it's you know the entire delivery has to be in a single wave uh, replenishment some more uh, replenishment are added scenarios are added and or of technology you know uh, there are 150 plus uh, scenarios supported uh, uh, these are the main advantage comparison of wm and ewm um, then coming into the details of it the hu activation is i told you right many clients were skeptical um, in activating the hu uh, that's why where they were living with the su management um, anyone what is the difference between hu and su management handling unit management and storage unit management hmm? gagan because i'm not troubling the freshers you know rashi also rashi is like 4.5 years experience uh. Chaitanya. Okay, Chaitanya is okay, one year only in EWM. Sorry, Chaitanya. Okay. Any, any, anyone? What's the difference between SU management and HU management, Bipin? SU management is a functionality between the SAP, ECP, WMS, and WMS that, right. that allows you to actually group again for storing purpose. Whereas handling unit, HU management is required as a more of a distribution, I mean, more of the any functionality. Mm. which is activated at a store location level and then that so as you when you actually activate issue as you by default is missed uh, for that so for the internal mobility you must have the issue then but then you can live only with the storage unit you don't need a issue for that purpose yeah, yeah hu and su are pretty much the same su i would say the younger brother but it has a lot of limitations meaning it cannot be uh, made available in the uh, interim areas. Once it comes to the interim area, it lost its identity. It has to jump to the delivery document only. It cannot be nested, a serial number cannot be captured. There are a lot of limitations with the SU management. And it's, and it's only available within the warehouse. You know, Once it is there in the delivery, that's a different story. But uh, free floating HUs, you know, meaning the HUs which are not assigned to the deliveries, uh, that possibility is very limited in the SU management. But the HU is a very comprehensive one, uh, supply chain term. You know, the, you can use the serialized shipping container code also, so that uh, everyone knows the stakeholders knows the identity identification. They can all uh, leverage by scanning the barcode and you know uh, uh, simplifying their uh, inbound process. And um, HU is available in the entire. Uh, and beauty of EWM is uh, the HU activation is at the storage type level, meaning in a single bin uh, we can have both the HU stocks and the non-HU stocks coexisting coexisting in the same bin. That is the ultimate you know, flexibility in EWM. Here, uh, the HU activation is at the S-lock level. Uh, we need a partner location and uh, you know, more complexity. So that's why you know, many clients were uh, skeptical uh, or you know, they were uh, not jumping and uh, activating this HU. And they were forced to leave with the SU management, the lean version of it, uh, with those limitations. But now people can relaxedly activate at the story tape level. And this is the ultimate flexibility. And pick point handling is very ambiguous. We don't know which is the mother HU and which is a child HU and what is, needs to be returned. It's all ambiguous here. Here it's very clear, you know, supported with the necessary task, what needs to be returned and put back and, you know, what needs to be allocated. Um, it's very clear. Even we have a work center transaction in the mobile device so that, you know, the pick point allocation can happen. Serialist products, uh, forget it, you know, uh, can't be managed at bin level. Uh, here, uh, we have ultimate flexibility in EWM. We have A, B, C, D, meaning we can have document serial number, we can have bin level, we can have warehouse level, uh, and we can switch off the serial number in some warehouses if you don't want them. So it's ultimate flexibility. We have multiple options we have in EWM, serial number management. Uh, I, we talked about you know the complete delivery has to be in a single wave. This is a major limitation. Uh, here in EWM, one delivery line can be in multiple wave. The classical example is a triple one. Uh, storage section is mandatory. These are okay, frivolous things, nothing great about it. Storage section is mandatory. Here, section is not mandatory. Uh, here, we used to have a concept called dynamic bins, the PO number or the reservation number as a bin number. 
but here it's not required. You know, we have a lot of uh, attributes or parameters to determine the bin. So that that uh, that stopgap measure, uh, that, that nonsense is removed. Uh, and then the bin is unique at the storage type level. Here the bin is unique at the warehouse level. You know, uh, it may be an uh, advantage or disadvantage, whatever you call it. You know, uh, nevertheless, the bin is uh, now a huge field with 18 characters. Here it was only 10 characters. So if you want to make it unique, uh, you can just prefix with the storage type, uh, and that way it becomes unique. Um, only one fixed bin possible. I don't know SAP how it survived, you know, for 15 years by keeping one fixed bin. Uh, this is sort of stupidity only. But now we have multiple fixed bins. Uh, one product can have multiple fixed bins, you know. If the demand is huge and uh, you don't have different bin size and it's diff very difficult to, you know, change the bin, alter the bin, uh, we can allocate more bins, more fixed bins for a, for a fast moving product. Uh, and these are sort of some advantage, you know, looks like advantage, but, you know, uh, for SAP uh, personally, it looks like a loophole. So they have plugged the loophole. And, uh, you know, for bulk storage, only HU management is supported. And um, two-step picking is a uh, wave is mandatory. Here, uh, without wave also, we can do two-step picking. So these are the differences. So if you want, uh, you know, we can talk about it. Uh, any clarification required, especially for the WM guys? And just a comparison, right? The TO item can be compared to the task in EWM. TO header can be compared to the order. Here in uh, uh, ECC, we have the, the ECC WM, we have only one document. Whereas in EWM, we have two different documents. And the transfer requirement can be uh, your, uh, your uh, warehouse request, which is nothing but your ODO or ID, outbound delivery order or inbound delivery. And pick in area where it's used to print the label or you know to uh, split the TO. Uh, based on the volume or weight uh, that is compared to the activity area and but activity area is uh, you know 3x or 4x more more feature more functions uh, compared to the pick picking area is just a simple one but activity area you can do many things in ewm without activity area I, uh, we can't imagine you know activity area is doing many things in ewm any questions guys uh, on the comparison Because the side, uh, when we see in WM, we have dynamic bins, right? So, how uh, that is handled in EWM? Can you uh, touch upon Yeah, for things? example, the staging area bins, right? It can be yeah. determined based on the carrier, uh, you know, the vendor or the product master or, you know, the WPT. So, you don't need the PO number as the bin or the production order number, reservation number. These are very, you know, ambiguous things actually. Who is going to print and, you know, anyway, your bin, you, have, you can. Dedicate a bin number, bins created, and the bin could be determined based on the attributes. So, so basically, in EWM, how how that is handled? That's that's what my question is. Yeah, in EWM, I told you you will create bins, bin one, bin two, bin three, whatever you know the actual bins, and uh, uh, you allocate a bin, you know, for a certain type of PO, or you know, for example. Uh, uh, the GR staging area bins, you know, you don't know the PO number as a bin number, right? You can't earmark the area. Rather, you say uh, for a particular vendor, you can dedicate him to a staging bay, or you know, if it's a, a temperature control or you know, a fresh produce, you want to bring it to a particular staging area, we can do that. So there are n number of attributes to determine the bin. Uh, so there's no need for dynamic bins. Okay, thanks. Because the dynamic bins are just a document number as a bin number, but physically there won't be uh, people would be not earmarking that right. It's it's the physical and the system are not aligned. You know that is a major flaw. Okay, so that's about in nutshell. I can talk. You know, I can I, I need to enhance these slides and I can keep two or three slides also. You know, if people are interested, uh, I have one requirement where uh, people wants to have a session dedicated session to compare the WM and EWM, so I can do that. But yeah, I lost touch, you know, the, the, the implementations we did long back in 2009 or eight or whatever. So we don't know WM now, you know, it's in the uh, rear view mirror. Okay, now, um, you know, right, the SAP one code line business, meaning they do everything in the cloud environment and then the move to the, uh, you know, on-prem environment. And then finally the business suite, they are motivated to migrate to s 4 ana if they are not migrating to S4ANA, then there would be some functionalities uh, they have to suffer, you know. 
those who have implemented ewm and still not migrated to s4 rana they are lost in the pipeline actually you know they don't get water in chennai if you are see the water line you don't get it that's it one code line so the code line will uh, uh, originate from uh, you know the cloud customers and then uh, anyway on prem also nowadays you know getting to cloud now so uh these are the three areas in ewm like in uh, mm we have purchasing uh, inventory management and invoice verification and in sd we have uh, sales and you know delivery and billing similarly in ewm we have inbound uh, outbound storage and operations um, and there are cross topics or whatever we call it the supporting your cross topics or you know the native technologies uh, the implementation tools okay there are different things one is a cross topic the other one is the supported process uh, uh, and then the native technologies then the implementation tools native technologies are the mfs uh, the rf the rfid those are the native technologies uh, implementation tools are uh, your uh, migration tools your uh, not your active methodology but your uh, uh, the drf uh, not the drf also the migration tools basically you know if you want to migrate from uh, uh, classical to uh, uh, s4 rana or from wm to ewm so those are the implementation tools or the migration tools and um, let's look at the inbound processing so the inbound main idea is to uh, Uh, if you are using the yard management and the tu processing you check in the tu and then you dock it to the door and then you do the unloading uh, cross docking maybe from tu to tu also you can do the cross docking what is cross docking anyone hmm my understanding on cross docking uh, rajan is we will not take the material once uh, received to the the final storage bin but we will move the material from the interim area or the docking uh, area uh, to the uh, picking area and from there we will ship it right that's cross docking exactly so we don't do the put away if there are back orders or urgent deliveries waiting for it there is no fun in doing the put away you know rather it can be moved from the gr dock goods receipt dock to the goods issue dock directly or you can do bit of you know labeling and sorting and blah 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 and then get the get the hell out of there you know at the, at the earliest there's no need to double handle and do the put away and then pick there's no fun when the people are angry when there are back orders yeah uh, cross docking even you can imagine you know the truck to truck also cross docking can happen you know from uh, one truck to another truck directly we can move yeah for uh, rajan that is uh, one uh, i wanted to highlight earlier uh, you know uh, some of us are not from uh, uh i don't have much sap experience and uh, some of first are not uh, having a wm uh, experience so uh, yes so these terminologies if you can uh, uh, this is just explain. preempting only you know meaning we are talking at a high level anyway we will be reiterating it actually you know when we talk about the special topic we will show the pictures and you know we will do the scenarios in cross docking but at least you register it sure. if you can do some homework you know if you can google and get some more knowledge uh, parallelly you know it will be good also Uh, these are just a high level you know introduction like just a trailer only the main picture will come you know when we do the uh, actual topics yeah. just to, just to know right when we talk about the cross talking the deco vas now you should be able to you know at least um, understand to the second level if not the third and fourth level at least you should know right i'm not just talking uh, cross talking alone i'm talking so many things if you see uh, when we talk about the wave management i said many things right i'm talking about the airport and i'm talking about the concrete example and also i'm talking about the beach wave the fish is not coming to the shore anyway but the products will definitely come to the you know to the to the staging area <laughs> so this much i am talking so you should be able to you know at least visualize uh, you know imagine or whatever yeah these are just first cut only you know like a production run there will be a second cut third cut refinement happens yeah all right so charu uh, who was that uh, speaking charu only like cross docking yeah you're right cross the cross docking is just moving from gr dock to the ga dock and um, especially when back orders are there there's no fun in doing the put away and pick it right it's just a double handling okay so uh, inbound we can do the cross docking and uh, also the most im important thing is the put away strategy you know, which we talked about and of course you know visibility accuracy these are all blah 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 things and outbound outbound the uh, speed is important the throughput is important for that we have to do the sorry outbound is here okay 
So reduce the picking, packing, and shipping and billing errors. Uh, error free, accurate picking, shipping accuracy, throughput, turnaround times. These are critical. The throughput, the turnaround time, shorter turnaround time of the truck, and other things. The billing errors, shipping uh, uh, accuracy, no returns, very minimal returns. Then um, cross docking also. Cross docking is not in inbound baby. It's also for outbound. And uh, so these are the things you know. As I said, it's not some of them uh, are are applicable for you know both areas not only for one area then the storage and operations storage and operations you see uh, we do the physical inventory uh, to ensure the book and uh, uh, you know the real inventory are same and slotting replenishment kit to stock vas transit warehouse warehouse building this is just an indicative one you know somebody ask you what are the areas within the storage and operation especially for the project managers to allocate the resource. So in a typical implementation, there would be three or four consultants or maybe five or six also, depending on the complexity of the project. At least two, you know, one inbound, one outbound. If the inbound, the workload is not more, then the same person can do the storage and operations. So, so if you look at the skill set, the inbound person should know the QM, the deco, you should be thorough in the, in, uh, you know, the cross docking and, uh, the different unit of measures, the put away strategies, the put away rules. That's where the inbound consultant should be, uh, uh, you know, focusing on. The outbound consultant should be more on the wave management, the WOCR, you know, the shipping cockpit, um, the dock, dock appointment scheduler, and uh, the integration with TM. Uh, you should be thorough with the outbound scenarios. You know? Storage and operations, you should be expert in the replenishment, kit to stock, VAS, and other things. So normally, uh, you have a, don't have a dedicated person for storage and operation. The same person can do it. As I said, you know, depending on the complexity, there could be more consultants. Any questions on the different areas of uh, EWM? Hmm? I speak, you know, I, we want a more interactive sessions. Uh, one is like I can take some breather, like the whale going to the, you know, <laughs> ocean surface and then get some fresh air. Similarly, you know, you guys can make it more interactive and you're coming with good experience you know, 16 20 9 8 let's make it more memorable enjoyable and uh, more interactive more collaborative any questions guys am i audible Getting pin drop okay, silence good. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Good. Okay, good. Mm. okay. Okay, last 18 minutes. Uh, today, I'm just taking the entire thing. Um, let's keep moving. So this is just a slide, you know, uh, trailing along or tagging along with the SAP uh, evolution path, you know, which uh, release, what, what was released, the major ones only, not a com complete list. The complete list will take at least 10 slides. So it's just an uh, important one. You see the SAP's focus area now, uh, direct TM integration, you know, uh, JIT integration, uh, the tugger trains, um, task interleaving, PM integration, the ASR integration. These are the new ones, you know, SAP for web GUI, uh, you know, the MES DMC integration. Uh, DMC is SAP's uh, digital manufacturing cloud. You know, uh, the, the direct integration, thanks to the BMW, you know, we can simplify the warehouses. EWM can also be used for simple warehouses, uh, thanks to the synchronous posting. So, so these are the important areas now where SAP is focusing now, you know, the integration and also the mostly the PM integration, I would say, compared to the other integration, the production, sorry, the production one, the production one is the major one. Uh, that's it. Okay, now, I think here we have a logical break, you know, I don't want to get into the documents now, but yeah, let's just talk about the documents and then we'll finish the story. So this is the document understanding you know now we get into documents but before that uh, let me just go to the deployment option you know let me complete the deployment option so the deployment option we have only two options you know we don't care about the business suite customers even though you might be working in some of the implementation but still you know we don't talk much about that this is a fading story so the main one we have to concentrate is embedded decentral on prem cloud it's called in stack and the extra stack cloud edition and this is a basic one, the cloud essential one, which is a multi-tenant one. So these are the uh, way forward approach for SAP, you know, whether you take an in-stack, which is embedded, a multi-stack or extra stack, which is a decentral. So why people go for decentral, anyone? 
any idea why, why people go for decentral um, what is the main advantage of decentral uh, decentral you know right the wm is running in a separate box uh, we are not uh, you know uh, working along with the um, uh, other modules like the fa or the plant maintenance or production those are the core modules running in the main system the ecc system the erp system or the core and ewm is isolated what is the advantage of decentral it's same like a decentralized warehouse in the past. So the first is uh, the company might not be using SAP ECC as a ERP, but they've just chosen EWM as the WMS solution. That might be unlikely, but then that is one reason that EWM is a no. standalone solution chosen, and that is might pertinent for 3PL companies where they don't have the other modules, but they're just a EWM. That could be one reason. Second is the uh, the critical availability need of the EWM. I mean, it cannot go down. So if the there is the high transactional load on the EWM and if for some reason there is a connectivity failures in the S4 or then the EWM also might be down, right? So to avoid that probably. Uh, Super. Yeah, that's Super man. well said. Vinay. Even I can't say like that, Bipin. You are the guru man. Yeah. Nice two points, you know, I just picked up some points from you, you know, which I can use it for the other trainings. Really good, Bipin. Well put. OK, so the decentral, what's, let's clear the decentral first, you know, whatever you said. Yeah, the decentral, the main advantage is you said the, the 3PL because, you know, they could connect with the heterogeneous uh, ECCs. Flexible upgrade, you know, you don't want to um, put all your eggs in the same basket, you know. There could be a complex PP module or a PM module. Uh, so you don't want to burn the entire thing. You can flexibly upgrade your systems. And this 24 by 7 operations, as you said, something gone wrong with the ECC. Not everything will go because these are mission critical one, uh, execution uh, dominant ones. So the business should continue, you know, even if the SOs are not created because they normally do it, uh, you know, a couple of days in advance or, you know, so they can still do. But these are... Um, uh, time critical, you know, the operations. So that cannot go down. So thereby we are keeping it in a separate box and ensuring that, you know, the 24 by 7 operations are guaranteed by a high end server and, you know, some backup measures and whatever. Uh, high volume throughput viruses. Uh, of course, you know, because we do a lot of transactions uh, and we don't want to, you know, even though the uh, cloud infrastructure is providing that much. Maybe things are changing, you know, as we uh, buy the servers from the AWS or the uh, Microsoft Azure or whatever. In that case, uh, some of the things may not be, uh, you know, relevant at some point in time, maybe 2025 or 2026. But still, as we speak, you know, the latency and um, the automated warehouses, uh, it's better to keep the system in close proximity. For example, if you have a warehouse in Indonesia and in Vietnam, it's better to keep the box in that uh, region only, you know because of the latency and, you know, uh, especially the automated viruses. Um, if they're running automated viruses, then uh, it makes sense to go with these central. Uh, uh, when people go for embedded, uh, if they have production virus, uh, automotive industry and uh, tight integration with, you know, Kanban, just in time, just in sequence, um, uh, synchronous posting, they want minimal queue failure or, you know, they want to avoid the delivery. There are a lot of vendors uh, who cannot provide uh, ASN, uh, so in that case, you go for embedded and embedded. It's a simplified architecture and, you know, we are not um, uh, creating more footprints, you know, the data duplication and uh, we are not duplicating the data. So simplified data and uh, synchronous postings, uh, you go for embedded. Uh, if it's a big approach, you know, uh, you can't do the migration for all the modules in one shot. Complex S4 core, uh, you have to do first EWM, then you go for decentral you know first you implement uh, ewm on s4 ana and the remaining components can be moved to s4 ana the next wave yeah? in that case you go for decentral um, so these are the clear advantage of decentral as uh, rightly said by bipin yeah you go for this thing if you are a 3pl and uh, your ecc we don't know and also mission critical we want to ensure and safeguard and you know protect our environment you go for decentral and if you are not having decentral, yes, anyway, Gartner will throw you out, you know, the SAP in the lower quadrant. So, so better you have to support the decentral because others are supporting as well. <laughs> mm. Okay. You just said about the, the other options. If you can go back to the first slide. Uh, 
why are you discounting that business suit and EWM kind of option, right? I mean, which one? The first one. Yeah, the business suit is right. So that I business mean, business suit, the ACC, you know, the guys will ACC, move, right? Yeah. ECC and EW. Okay, so so nobody will now go for the ECC and EW kind of combination. Rather, they will wait for the S4 and then go to go for the embedded. Yeah, new uh, new implementations. Obviously, they will go for S4 and you know. But if somebody has already gone for the EWM with the ECC, can that investment be salvaged uh, when they go for S4 as a decentralized EWM? Yeah, that's scheme? where SAP is providing the migration tool, the cockpit, and uh, the migration dashboards and other things. So they are giving a nice uh, path for you to migrate immediately, you know, to EWM S4 and Okay. There is a yeah. And how about this cloud one? So, so S4 HANA cloud SaaS solutions. How is EWM embedded in that? Is the same like S4 HANA embedded? Yeah, same, same like embedded. You know, okay. you have only everything in one, 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 one box running in stack. Only one, one stack you are buying, and everything in in stack. And every way thing, so you are paying the monthly subscription. But who is going to do the implement? SAP is saying, you know. Don't do development, don't do development. But they are shouting from the rooftop, but who is going to listen, right? Anyway, there's no escaping. You have to implement some bodies and somewhere here and there, you know. Uh, so that that's still, I'm not on the market. So the people who are implementing the cloud solutions like the Accenture's and, you know, the capture, I don't know about, uh, you guys may be doing a lot of things. TCS, you know, I have the Infosys batch also. So, so, so yeah, it's a monthly subscription you pay to SAP and SAP will manage the, uh, you know the development things i'm not sure you know who is going to manage the development aspect the standard native ones who is going to configure them you know yeah, yeah so why i'm keeping the business suite just for your history purpose and if you are uh, working in a migration project then uh, yeah so initially sap said uh, uh, it's better to keep ewm on the scm server you know so that it works like a well oiled machine then they changed the story the narrative was changed you know in ewm 9.0 they said there are some constraints with TM, you know, it ate a roadblock. Then they said, uh, forget it, you know, it makes sense to put it on NetWeaver standalone one. Since 9.0, uh, I think in 2014 or something, 14 or 15 somewhere, uh, the 9.0 was released. You know, at that point in time, it said it makes sense to do it as a NetWeaver. So these are the two most scenario numbers. The scenario numbers or option numbers, uh, just to align with the SAP note number 1606493, they've listed all the options. Good news is all most of the options are there for business suite, and only four and five are there for embedded and uh, decentral. You can refer to this note uh, if you want to align. And um, this is option zero, uh, EWM done on SCM server. Option one, EWM uh, implemented on a NetWeaver standalone. Uh, only EWM. Here we have the APO coexisting in the same server. Option number two. Here we have the TM you know coexisting in the same. Server. Option number two B. And this is a you know a poor man's a poor client's implementation. Uh, this should not be uh, read as embedded. This can be uh, said bolt on, meaning the customers who cannot afford a different box, uh, very stingy customers, they will go for the bolt on. You know the bolt on. There is no forward path. They have to you know scrap the project, and then they have to do a fresh implementation only. So this also used to be there. Same like you are embedded. The ECC and EWM running on the same 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 box, the same client. So now the S4 Rana, we know that uh, embedded option for small and mid-sized warehouses, and decentral we talked about, you know, for the inherent advantage, uh, high volume, high complex, high throughput, 24 by 7. Uh, so EWM decentral is recommended. Um, so these are the driving blocks or the drivers. Uh, the no entry, the dotted arrow means uh, less favored and bold arrow means, you know, uh, well favored. So those are the things. And uh, this one is color coded. So this is where in a typical project, you have to brainstorm and decide, you know, uh, is there any, for example, if uh, my industry is a uh, automotive industry and I do a lot of production integration and my uh, manufacturing facility is an adjacent facility, I don't want any shipping documents. And I am more interested in uh, a lot of vendors are there uh, and you know, in that case, straight away, I'll go for embedded. So this comparison is here, you know, if you want a synchronous posting, tight integration, uh, you know, the ASR advantage, Migo, you know, you post synchronously things, then you take embedded. But if you want uh, the decentral advantage, which I have not listed here, it anyway uh, implied, and then the transportation cross docking is not supported here. 
I don't know why it is not supported. It's just a, a temporary one, maybe. Somewhere down the line, maybe, you know, the parity will be there. Uh, but as of now, as we speak, the TCD is not supported. And um, yeah, some limitations are there in embedded, but mostly advantage, you know, except for keeping the uh, eggs in the same basket, you know, just the risk protection measures and, you know, mission critical things only you have to be safe. Especially when the other modules are very giant modules, you don't want to keep uh, all the whales in the same motion, you know, the things has to move to Antarctica, Arctic, whatever, Pacific oceans. I think that with that, I'm done for today. Um, any questions, guys? I know I'm just a bit uh, going on a, you know, fourth gear, if not the fifth gear. I don't shift to fifth gear for sure. Uh, I'll look down, you know, third gear or second gear. Uh, the coming sessions. Since you guys have experience, you know, and I had the liberty to, you know, uh, yeah, speak a little faster. I'll slow down. Said, any inputs, any comments, man? Anyone? Bipin, Charu, Gagan, because uh, Rashi, Venkatesh. When do we get the server access, Rajan? And for how much time we will have it? Yeah, server access I will provide, you know, either uh, today evening or tomorrow morning. Uh, you'll have the access um, till the course uh, duration, meaning if it's uh, running. I have a constraint only on 8, 9. As of now, it is only soft block. But if it is assuming odd block, then uh, uh, the 8th and 9th, uh, you guys have to, you know, we have to skip on those two days alone. Uh, otherwise, you know, we can, uh, we are talking about um, running the program for uh, straight 15, 15 days, let's say, you know. 15, three uh, multiplied by three is like 45 hours or 50 hours roughly. So for that three week duration, uh, you'll have the server access. So maybe plus, uh, you know, I will try to give for one more week, but if there is any other training overlap, then uh, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing you, but I'll try to, you know, accommodate one more week. Uh, you guys have to parallelly, you know, look at your sandbox and uh, develop something and then play, uh, start start setting up your, your environment only, not, not, Putting the bet on my server actually, yeah. For practicing, it's okay, but for uh, parallelly, you know, building up your uh, scenarios in your server, it's ideal actually. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, uh, comments, inputs from anyone? Rajan, one more thing. See, when you go for the WM implementation. Hmm. Either from the some non SAP to directly to S4 WM or maybe hmm. some WM is to WM. Uh, are there any specific cutover precautions we have to take? In IAM, actually, we just do the 561 or 501, mostly 561 movement for the initial stock load. Correct. Uh, in case of EWM, in the cutover stage, uh, how do we actually? Do the stock upload in the bin, so bin mapping with the stock upload. And are there any other cutover activities that we should keep in mind? Or oh, as a cutover is a big concept? one, right? This is very strategic in nature. You'll have a, a Excel sheet, you know, running with the, at least a 50 line items, you know, as part of the cutover with the roles and responsibilities assigned. And you know, people are there for tracking. So cutover is a cutover, right? So it's a strategic in nature, and it's very meticulous. In uh, you know, needs to plan properly. A project manager uh, should be involved. No, no, but not now, in the sense. I'm saying that from the EWM perspective, what are activities that are involved for EWM cutover? Yeah, EWM cutover. Generically speaking, the stock upload. If the MM guys are uh, complicating by adding the value and split valuation and blah blah blah, then you say, okay, MM guys, you load separately, and you know, we are loading this separately in EWM, meaning. It's two independent activities. The MM will do it in, uh, you know, their uh, MIGO, and um, we will upload in uh, bin level. Then later we will reconcile. The other approach is uh, we will do it in EWM, and it will do the postings in MM as well. If it is a simple without any, uh, you know, value or price entry or split valuation or the complexities, just the material and quantity and, you know, location, storage location, then no problem. Otherwise, there would be finger pointing will be there. So that is about the stock upload. And, um, uh, yeah, we need to have two or three files, you know, one for HU and uh, the other one for serialized products, maybe, and then, you know, the regular products without HU, maybe. And uh, the other master data, you know, right, uh, The uh, pretty much all are going to be uh, moved to the DRF, uh, if not the IDOCs. And um, 
and then the setup, right? The manual setup activities like uh, the uh, ad hoc bin creation, the work centers, and uh, uh, the users uh, for RF creation. So I can just uh, flash one uh, uh, cutover plan, and then we can talk about that for 10 minutes or so 15 minutes. Sure, sure, sure. In ERP WMS, we typically have both the options like WM before IAM or IAM before WM, right? Both and both have pros and cons. In AWM, do we also get those options and any recommendations on that? Whether we do the put away first and the GR later, or we, we do the GR first and then posting GR. You know, in, okay. in IAM or in this thing only, we have only two options: GR before uh, mm. task, task mm. after GR. You know. Mm. Yeah. But in EWM, we have four uh, modes of GR. One is the immediate GR. The other one is the wait for the last pallet to be placed. Like, uh, you know, the people like the petrochemicals, you know, like polyester. Uh, uh, it's like, say, I'm quoting the Reliance example, you know, the supervisor will go and verify the uh, polyester pallets placed. And then only you'll have a buffer time, you know, even though the put away is done, there would be a put away delay for one hour. So within the time, the supervisor will go and, uh, you know, verify them and then only trigger the uh, you know the green signal so in that case uh, the loop will be completed when i say the loop is completed the inbound it gets a status nine you know so uh, these are the two extremes one is a uh, more traffic and it would be nightmare for the invoice verification clerk you know imagine a gr based iv and if he looks at a uh, thousand pallets thousand pallets for one line item i'm just giving a exaggerated scenario so thousand gs means uh, the invoice verification clerk you can imagine you know the problem with them so these are the two extreme GRs, and we have collective mode and you know one more uh, full GR mode. So in fact, in EWM we have four different ways of posting the GR. Okay, hopefully we get to see those in the demos. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> the more you probe me, the more you you know interact. Uh, you know it opens up some uh, dimensions. Otherwise, you know we'll be going with the standard uh, typical one. You know. Yeah, I will be having some consciousness here and there, but you just make it interactive and you know, I'm not uh, forcing you guys, just make it yeah, cool, relax, yeah, interact. And I get more experience also. Like you raised two points you know, today morning, it's interesting one, uh, the material not sync, that is known thing only, but still, yeah, it's etching in my memory. Okay, thank you for, thank you for coming in the session. So we'll be ending this meeting, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.